Coming to you from Blue Cruise Studio in Temecula, California, it's the Whiskey Throttle Show. Taking you inside the lives of the legends and leaders in moto and action sports. Today's guest is brought to you by Yamaha. Yamaha is the industry leader in two-wheeled fun and performance. Celebrating 50 years of YZ in 2024, the Blue Crew is still dominating shootouts and competitions. Yamaha revs your heart. SKDA is the leader in motorcycle graphics. Driven by a combined passion for art and motorcycles, SKDA has become a global leader in the off-road motorcycle space. Their graphics can be spotted from a mile away with a unique design that blends speed and creativity. SKDA, search and supply of true art within moto. Troy Lee Designs, built for the world's fastest racers. TLD blends elite level protection with industry leading style and performance. Moto, bike, helmet paint, casual wear, whatever your passion, Troy Lee Designs is waiting for you on the next level. Nihilo Concepts, Enhance your riding experience with superior products like the Start-Stop Conversion Kit, Fuel Pet Cox, Frame Grip Tape, Lever Grip, Grip Donuts, Secondary On Switch, Billet Foot Pegs, Billet Throttle Housings, and so much more. The Hilo Concepts produces exceptional products, all of which are made right here in America. Hey folks, thanks for joining us here at the Whiskey Throttle Show. I'm your host, David Pingree, and uh, we've got a really cool guest today here in the Blue Crew Studios, Guy Ben bugging for a long time to get on the program uh he's a mini cycle prodigy 250 supercross champ 13 times supercross winner davy milksaps welcome to the show man stoked to have you fun to be here finally finally yeah finally. i've been bugging you for a long time you hey, and man. bruce yeah bruce too <laughs> um we appreciate you taking the time to come on i know uh you're not you don't even live in state anymore so no. we just had to time it right when you're out here um we start our shows with the Nilo concepts front end chatter uh, check out those Nihilo guys if you've got parts you want to improve on your bike. Let's start. Just, man, tell me a little bit about dad life. I know your son, Dane, was super into BMX. I thought yes. you were kind of going that route. And I, I heard tried. you say something like <laughs> you were headed to Grands. He's like, yeah, dad, I'm over it. I want a dirt bike. Yep. So it basically, I think it was the um, state championship, the Arizona state, state championship. And he lined up against a kid who was nag three. And... He beat the kid a couple times, but could never get him off the gate. Could never get this kid off the gate. So if he would, if he didn't get him off the gate, he wasn't going to beat him. So I made a deal with him and said, if you beat him off the gate and you win, you know, I, I gave him two options that for sure he wasn't going to beat him off the gate. He might have beat him in one, but he wasn't going to beat him off the gate. Yeah. I will buy you a dirt bike of your choice. He kind of had it wrapped, no big deal. Like, you know, he'll beat him for sure, but he's not going to, he's not going to, well, smoked him off the gate. Smoked him off the gate. And, and crushed that race. Came off the track, first thing he said, where's my dirt bike? And I'm like. Called you on it. Called me right on it. And then I got it for him. Went to a few more nationals. And leading up to Grands, you know, he wanted to go. His team was just, had just folded, um, the throwdown team. And he's like, you know, we're debating on whether to go to Grands or he wanted a 65 versus his 50. So I said, okay, you either want to go to Grands or do you want 65? 65. Like, not even a hesitation. <laughs> he called your bluff again. I mean, <laughs> in, instant. Like, it was not even a, oh, I don't know. Let me think about it. It was an instant. I don't care about grands. Like, I want a 65. Well, I got rid of the bicycles and got them a 65. Oh, and, and we did the works races. And we did the MPGC stuff. Um, and we did some of the moto for kids and yeah. a swap moto and whatnot. You know, just just having fun with it. No yeah. big deal. Um, but that's that's pretty much my fault for getting started. <laughs> you you, you kind of tried to taunt him and he just busted you. <laughs> yeah. Him. Are you bummed? Like, were you enjoying that with him? Or are you like, all right, let's go dirt bike racing? It was a lot cheaper. Mm. It was a lot cheaper. Cleaner. A easier. lot easier. Yeah, 25 seconds. And the bike maintenance was super easy. Yeah. You know, to take a rag to wipe it down. <laughs> and yeah, the dirt bikes is it's quite a bit different, especially, you know, he just had surgery two weeks ago. Oh, um, yeah, you told me it's a yeah, knee, huh? Yeah, so he ripped the bone off. Well, the ACL ripped the whole bone off. Uh, so they had to go back in and put the bone back together. So he had an ACL at 11 years old. Um, his mistake, but with him growing so fast, I think his bones are pretty weak. Mm -hmm. But we have him on some good stuff now to help strengthen his bones a little bit just from how much he grew so fast. Mm -hmm. So Surgery went well, though. Yeah, good. everything. I mean, he's 
he'll, he's two weeks tomorrow and he's having a really hard time straightening it and it's it's fun to watch like him try to straighten it but yet be in so much pain to where you're like just I know it sucks. I've been there. I'm 35 surgeries deep. Like I know it sucks. Welcome to physical therapy. But yeah, you like you know you're gonna you got to get through it. There's no choice. I'm sitting over there. I'm pushing on a little bit to help him like to help him break through it, and like and then it gets sad to where like you can see the tears in his eyes because he's trying so hard to make it straight. Because again, I made a bet. You make it straight, you can have your Xbox back. Oh jeez. He's not straight. Yes, there's no Xbox, so he's doing all day long. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, he's sitting on the couch. He can't do anything. I'm like, get it straight. You can have your Xbox. Those are your those are your options. I'm not. I'm uh, not. So it sucks. Well, the timing might be right because you're building it. My second question was about your facility. Yeah. Um, I saw you just put something on Instagram, like a rendering of what it's going to look like. Yeah. And uh, I think Bruce was maybe telling me the the concept of it. Like yeah. you've got all these different tracks, but you also have garages that'll be AC. Man caves, yep. Dude, tell me about it. This sounds amazing. <laughs> so. And where is it? So it's in Yucca, Arizona. So about 35 minutes outside of Havasu towards okay. Kingman. It's okay. about an hour and an hour and a half from Vegas Airport. Okay. okay. So not not too too far, you know, because we lost a lot of tracks that's close to us. Um, so anyone going from Vegas to California, like I'm way closer. Mm. Um, and Phoenix, you can come to me. We'll have RV hookups. We'll have everything. We'll have you know man caves, so to say. If you buy them, you can make them whatever you want. You can do with whatever you want inside of them um, in a roundabout way. To a certain extent, obviously. Will it be like a lease or you can actually buy them and own it? You can buy it and own it, but there is a land lease. But uh-huh. um, only like like water, sewer, you know, electrical and stuff like that is is, is in there. But yeah. yeah, you have you have your twenty by sixty or so to say, some you know, give or take garage. And then on the side where you have the overhang, you can park your RV under, you have RV hookups and everything there on a concrete pad. And then you have the three tracks and eventually you'll have the restaurant and bar, convenience store, um, you know, pickleball court, uh, driving range, you'll have a pool, um, all that stuff. And I think there's gonna be like 500 man caves on that land. Um, so are you are you gonna do like a, a training facility, kind of like MTF I'm type not, of thing? Or is this just for riding, open, racing? Snowbirds are welcome, everyone. Like yeah. it's literally um, riding to the public, I'm trying to get races. I already have John from Motor for Kids hitting me up about what, when can we get started. Yeah. Um, I would love to get you know mini majors there. I'd love to get the AC, AZ open there. Just I'm close to Havasu. I'm close to home. I'm close to the the lake right there. You know yeah. we can you can be done racing and you can just go on the boat. So um, what is it from SoCal? Maybe four hours. Uh, four and a half. From where we're at right now, four. I would four, say okay. a, a, probably a good four. And from Fe- probably the same from Phoenix. I think it's like three hours from Phoenix. Okay, and then maybe maybe two and a half. Hour and a half from uh, Vegas. Yes, Vegas. it's about an hour and a half from Vegas if you go the uh, over the Hoover Dam. Okay. Yeah. Well, they don't have any tracks. If you well, go I to mean, Vegas, because Western Western is not really around. I think you can do private stuff with them, but um, you know they're not they're not really around yeah. anymore. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well. Keep us trying, us man. We just we you know they broke ground on the grading last week. I saw that. So my tracks. Um, trying to get the tracks going rather soon because those won't take long to build right um, we'll have a 50 a vet and a main track and if we have a big race let's say you know down the road where i can get davian and, and um them to come out to look at it, it it's i can make all the tracks into one so it's one big national track for mm-hmm. like a area or a regional not not yeah. not professional yeah. but it's big enough to where we can have fun with it. And it looks like good dirt to me. Like it I honestly, a lot of rock. It's Glen Helen. I would say it's more like Glen Helen dirt, hands down. PG kind of stuff. Yeah, I would say it, it's, when it rained, when I went out there and it was, it was actually, I was pumped. It actually had me excited. At first I was a little nervous. Cause I do see rocks on top, but when you get maybe five inches below, it's like, okay, like good that's, stuff. that's pretty mm-hmm. good. Awesome. Well, I can't wait. Keep us yeah. posted. We'll, uh, we'll come out and do a little video out there and yeah. show people what's going on. Um, hey, go check out whiskeythrottlemedia.com if you guys haven't. We got moto, off-road, dual sport content, all kinds of stuff over there, merch. If you guys want some online coaching, check out Elevate Motocross uh, at, on Instagram or elevateactionsports.com for that. Uh, lots of good stuff out there. Uh, our guest is brought to you by Yamaha. We're going to get into his story right now, so let's do it. Um, tell me about where you grew up. Was it in Cairo? So I was born in Orlando, Florida. Okay. And I grew up in St. Cloud. Well, see, I always get, I always ask questions like, what do you consider growing up? You know, it's like where were you born? Well, I was born in Orlando, and okay. then I lived in St. Cloud till I was twelve, and oh, then okay. and then or eleven and a half or twelve, whatever I was. 
then moved to Cairo. And St. Cloud is just a suburb of Orlando, right? Yeah, well, it's just on the outskirts. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, not far from Kissimmee, not far from Haines City. So James and I were super close Okay. there. He's three years older than me. Um, my dad and his dad were really close. So I was like, I mean, it's just the Florida boys, you know, the, yeah. everyone there. Um, and then moved to Cairo, lived in Cairo until I was 20 or 19, 19, 19 or 19, 20, something like that. Okay. And had the tracks there, had the property there. So what was, ch- what was your childhood like? Like those first 12 years? Um, did you have a lot of tracks around there? What, where were you guys riding? We would ride, I would say, maybe once a week. During the week, we go to Dade City, okay. um, Reddick if it was open, uh, Ocala, um, Bifflo, obviously. Bifflo is more of like a home track. Yeah. And then on the weekends, you'd go race Gainesville or you go race. There's one track that I don't remember the name of it, but I want to say it's Sunshine or Starline or whatever the heck it was. It was a super, super, super deep sand track. Um, my mom broke both her ankles there. That's county line, maybe. I don't do this, honestly. Who knows? But there's that track. And then you'd have all the races at the local tracks, like, like the Dade City and the Red X. And, okay. Um, but, yeah, that's it. And, Just, and you had a good group of kids racing with you. Yeah, I mean, we. Yeah. it was – back then, you know, people would come from all over to down south to race yeah. Florida. You know, like the Nick Adams and the Nathan Davenports mm. to where those kids were on fire yeah. – you know, when they were on 60s. Yeah. Um, and then they broke, got hurt at Gainesville. Um, mm. But, I mean, Alessi, myself, Chisholm, um, there's kids that are gone that I can't even remember. Dan Truman obviously was older than me, but he was a good one. Oh, really? He yeah. was good. He was, I have a, I actually have a picture of me on an 80, not 85, an 80, and he's on there too at Reddick. And I lined up against him for some odd reason. I don't know why we're in the same class. He's five years older than me, whatever it is. Okay. And you could never beat him. You weren't beating him on an 80. It just wasn't going to happen. Oh, really? He was that good? Compared to, I guess, younger people. Yeah, but he would always win. And the first time I got the whole shot on him, I won. And I I have that picture still to this day. And it's the first time I ever beat him. And it was like one of those, I thought I was, you know, king shit on Star Island for a minute. Yeah. You got to send that to him like once a year. (laughs) I do show him when I see him, yeah. you know, because it is funny. Yeah. He's gigantic on an 80, <laughs> and I'm a little tiny little dude. Do you remember a guy named Billy Feltz from out here? Do you remember that name? Mm-mm. He worked at Factory Cali for a while. When I was a kid coming over to California from Arizona to race, yeah. he would show, drive himself to Glen Helen, pull his 80 out of the back of the truck. He had a mustache. Yeah. <laughs> and he was racing against us, you know, like 9 to 11-year-old kids. Yeah. And I'm like, Dad, this guy's got a mustache. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, stay away from him, bud. Stay away from him. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. That sounds like Truman. Um, did you do any other sports or like were you dirt bikes from? I played basketball. You did? I did play basketball. I had a, a half court in my yard because okay. we had, I think, 20 something, 24 acres, something like that in St. Cloud. Oh, really? So I had a track on my land, just was just a makeshift track. Yeah. Um, the guys from Performance Engineering, uh, Win Kern back then, yep. um, was my first sponsor. Um, I was the ring bearer in his wedding. Like, yeah, I was. Oh, really? Yeah, we were, yeah. So, when and I go way back, and they built me a track um, when I was on the Cobra. Okay. Um, I mean, full makeshift, full make, going around every little tree we had in the land. Um, but I had a half court basketball hoop there, a okay. basketball court there. So, I played every day that I wasn't riding, I played. And then I played on a travel team, whatever it was. I mean, I don't think I was very good, but it was fun. I yeah. enjoyed basketball, yeah. but that was it. So, you know, we were talking earlier that your mom actually raced, your, you had siblings. I didn't know you even had a brother and sister. Yep. And I saw some awesome pictures. I'm a new big fan of your brother. <laughs> he's like Georgia redneck. He's very, he's, uh, he's the epitome of a redneck. Yeah. He's going to be getting a follow from me on Instagram. So look for that. Um, but how old? He's eight years younger than you, you yeah. said? And then your sister's what? A year and a half older. Okay. Yeah. I didn't even know you had siblings. Yeah. So, but they all rode. You guys all kind of did it together. Yeah. My sister actually when we were growing up, beat everybody. Oh, really? James, myself, everyone. You know, but, you know, she's James's age. I, no, she's not James's. She's a year and a half younger than James. Okay. But for some reason, I'm on a PW, like, she was fast. She ripped. Yeah, she ripped. And then, as I got a little bit older, like, five, you know, I started beating her. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, she went to the red a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Um, she made it before I did. Mm-hmm. And my brother never really wanted to. I think, uh, I asked him one day, I'm like, why, why didn't you want to race? And he goes, like, and his response back then, if it's the same response now, probably not. But it was, I had to see, I got to see what you had to go through and it wasn't worth it. Mm. Um, There's makes, probably something to that. Makes sense. 
It's I not mean, an easy road. Day in and day out, just the, you know, the animosity between everyone that it created um, and not really for someone who is redneck and young and just wants to live life like he does. Too it, much drama. It wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't the life that, you know, it, just the routine and the sacrifices you had to make yeah. to become, you know, anything. You have to love it. I don't care what it is. Yeah. If you don't love it, you know, like you're going to be limited in your success, right? Yeah. You, you have to be able to look at it and go, you know what? I don't care about doing that other stuff. I, I want to do this. Yeah. And if, if you're going, damn it, I got to do this. I want to go over that and do that. Like you should it, just pull the plug. And that's where it got tough for me. was, is, you know, when I was in our when I was in cloud, when I lived there, I had my whole family, you know, I had all my cousins, mm -hmm. my aunts, my uncles, uh, my grandma, who was obviously a big part of my life. Um, they all lived in Orlando on your mom's side, my mom's side. Yeah. They all lived in Orlando. So uh, when I left, I wasn't able to see any of them. Mm -hmm. And I would see my grandma every day at school uh, when I went to school there. Mm -hmm. So she was at every race. When I went from Florida to Texas um, for the commute to Lake Whitney and Mosier, she'd ride in the motorhome with us. Oh, really? Um, yeah, she'd take time off of school and come over. And then... She worked at the school? Yeah, she. I mean, she was the secretary for 46 years. Oh, wow. I mean, she basically almost ran the school at, at the end of everything because... Hmm. She knew everyone. She did everything. She told everyone where to go. <laughs> I mean, they shut the school down for three days when you know when she passed. The private oh, Catholic really? school that shut down for three days. So it was. I mean, she was a big deal for that school. She was a just. She was an amazing person. Right. But you know, losing not losing, but leaving all that behind to move to Georgia for me it was a. Well, I have everything here, so why am I moving? But then when I got to be there and day in and day out was able to do what I loved, that kind of stuff went away. So you guys moved just. For the reason of, of more property, be able to ride more. Yep. That was it. Yep. Mm. Well, I was 11 or 12. I, I'm I gather that's what it was for. Yeah. Um, and that you I said hope. that was about the time your folks split too? Uh, they split right after we moved. We were building the barn that we lived in. Okay. And we lived in a motorhome for, I think, seven or seven months. We lived in a motorhome. It was. How was that? My mom, my sister, my little brother, little Brian, and myself all lived in the motorhome for six or seven months. I slept outside a lot because like, I got kicked out a lot, um, getting in trouble. <laughs> and, um, Just but, what, out in a tent? Or well, what? she put me on a couch outside. With the bugs and whatever. Bugs, coyote, it didn't matter. Didn't matter. We had outside dogs, so I made sure they slept in the couch with me. Jeez. Um, but when that got built, or before, I think it was right when it got finished, or we were in there for a little bit. Um, I remember talking because my dad was at the races with me all the time, you know, and, and he was on the line with me. We go to the line with me every race and my mom or our friends, parents were going through a divorce. And I said, Oh man, that sucks. Cause if we, if you guys got divorced, like, like you'd be gone. I, I remember saying that to her straight to her face. To and, your mom? Yeah. Like basically like, cause my, I thought my dad has or the one that like was doing was everything. The one that would take your yeah. Reason, yeah. And well, I think two days later she sat me down and said, why would you say that? And I'm like, well, that's just what I just said. And she's like, well, you know, or I'm, you know, getting a divorce. Oh man! Because my dad stormed out beforehand. I'm like, what? What just happened? And that's, that's what that's what it all started. So it was like one of those, okay, okay. So you're taking me. <laughs> Good to know, you know, because at that point I'm like, well, shoot. So my dad's not going to come to the races anymore. That's going to suck. And at that time, Carlos was already, you know, in. And so I'm like, okay. So I found my thing with Carlos. And so it, it, it kind of took over for the going to the line. I was so nervous because I've never been to the line with somebody else. Mm -hmm. I've never been to the track with anyone else except for like my mom or Big Brian and, and whatnot. So having Carlos there, you know, definitely took a minute to get used to. But once once I won the first race with him, it was like one of those superstition things where I'm like, it's my guy. You got <laughs> to be there. And then it, and they know how superstitious I am. Superstitious I am, by the way. Like they know. So it's for that comment they're gonna they're gonna laugh what superstitions do you have all of them <laughs> everything <laughs> underwear socks. oh i wore the same underwear every single day at loretta did not matter every single day um yes right. they got washed oh, okay yes they got washed okay. um in the creek when you jump of in. course <laughs> no 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 we take them i take them off and i'd wash them so i'd hang them so they would dry so i can put them back on in the morning right. um it's just or i would or thelma or my mom i don't really care who washed them as long as they got washed yeah um had to get dressed the same exact way same spot um, I did that. I always had yeah. to put my left knee brace on first. 
So stupid. I don't remember which side I was. It's been so long. Um, but yeah, I had to put my right pant on, my right pant leg in first, and then my left. But they couldn't go all the way up. They had to be <laughs> halfway, and then I could pull them all the way. I had to put the right boot on before the left. Um, it had to buckle in that order and my helmet had to go on a certain way. My goggles had to be a certain place as I got really bad as I got older, but in the beginning I didn't really have, you know, as many. Yeah. You but, develop them. Oh, if I eat, if I crashed, I never wore that color again. Really? You know, so I, I broke my femur and my Alpine star when I was wearing Alpine stars, like when they came out with the graphic boots. Okay. You know, no six. Yeah. They had graphic, you know, All cool graphics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had red sticker graphics. I never wore it again. Ever, ever, ever. The first time I ever wore them, I broke my femur. Never again. Really? You yeah. wore red on Honda a lot, I thought. Not boots. Oh, the boots. The boots. Oh, yeah. Well, and I, and I wore you, That's what broke your femur. Well, <laughs> and that's the first time I ever wore a polar watch on my wrist, too. So I never, ever did that again, either. Mm. Ever. Never did I ever put a polar back on for, I don't even know how many years. It's funny how pretty much everyone does it. Ricky wore that yeah. orange gear. Yeah. You know, like he had his, everybody has their thing. Yeah. It, we're, we're, let's face it, we're weird. We're weird. Um, <laughs> I remember, I don't know how long ago I saw this, but Robbie Renard used to have this tick, two stroke days, right? But he would tug on his helmet strap yeah. and then he'd check his fuel. Well, you got to check the fuel. <laughs> but I mean, he would do it like 12 times okay. before, you know, by the okay. time the, from the yeah. time the one minute card went up until the gate dropped. Yeah. Tug on his thing, check the fuel. Yeah. He, you know, shake his arms up, then tug on his helmet, check the fuel. I'm like, bro, your helmet's tight, the fuel's on, you're all set. But hey, the fuel thing, man, that was people nowadays don't realize that. Oh, yeah. and it was a big deal. Yeah, you run out of you, and the car your fuel off one time, and that's, <laughs> well, I've been there, done that. Yeah, it sucks. You won't do it again. No. So you sounds like you kind of rode for fun a little bit early on, just kind of around the house. It wasn't serious right away. Oh, I rode a PW with no visor around my yard i think i think i had like a blue o'neill or scott or some sort of chest protector with like the pads on the outside but it was like cushion yeah and then um this is what i was trying to get from you the, the yeah. your very first couple of riding sets dude are my favorite uh fonseca <laughs> sent me one he's in these red rubber rain boots uh blue kawasaki pants like this hockey chest protector thing yep. open face helmet yep. <laughs> he's on a little honda i didn't thing. have an open face i was not old oh no <laughs> well I hit a fence. I mean, I hit a ball bar fence the first time, I believe. Did you? From what I was told. But yeah, I, I rode around my yard, like I said, and then I was, you know, in, in Florida, they had big ditches, obviously, for the rain yeah. and whatnot, but the driveways were built up. So we thought we were, we thought we were badass jumping the ditches. I mean, jumping the driveways. Yeah. We thought we were so cool. So at two weeks on the bike, I was jumping all the, all the driveways, I guess, from yeah. on the films that, you know, is, I think they're on uh, the movie Six okay. from Chance World. Yeah. It's on there my first time getting a bike in 1991. Oh, really? Um, and those I remember, I remember, you know, just riding around the yard. Yeah. But, yeah, I didn't have a track. We didn't have anything. We just did it for fun. Those are the best memories. Yeah. Uh, Going through the back yeah. trails in Florida. Like, we just go out there, and there was a big hill. And it's actually in the film. I know this for sure. It's, it's in the six. Where it's not, back then, it was a big hill for me. I was scared to death to go down it. That's right. And, Tiny. Go down it, but then go up it, and there was a big bush, like a, like a palm tree, like whatever it was, big bush. And I went down it, right into it, you know, and just, just things like that, that, you know, those were the days. Those, yeah. that, that was the life, literally. There was no pressure. You no. Were, there was no pretension. It was the most pure, yep. probably, you ever got yep. with riding a bike. Yeah. And then I sucked when, when I was racing. For sure, I sucked. I mean, I got well, yeah, but everywhere I went. But you also did go pretty early. We were looking at... Um, Loretta's your first time was 94 so yeah. how old would you have been well six five or six yeah five yeah it was 51 stock four to six <laughs> so you're a little buddy yeah I, I mean I was tiny and you know James was there and he was hauling ass on the PW and I'm like dude but then you know two years later I won yeah but yeah I, I don't know man it's I didn't have any pressure until I got older I'd say yeah did you uh what was the first so you had a pw50 mm -hmm. what was that like your first race bike too I mean, yeah that was my first race bike i had was a it pw stock or did you have the one with the pipe and all that crap so um i had a stock one obviously for a while and then at lake whitney we went out for the first year i want to say it was the first year still on pw okay. and win kern was my sponsor still or just just became my sponsor what it was he was racing at the time okay. and he was on his cowie racing at, at whitney he built me a badass 50 had the pipe and everything. I thought it was so sick. It blew up off the gate. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, I remember it. 
Um, and I didn't ride the rest of the week because I didn't have a bike. Oh, no, your um, only bike blew up. My only bike blew up. And Thanks, Wynn. <laughs> but, yeah, that was, that was, I think, the only time. And then I went to Loretta, and it blew up, I think, every moto. Oh. So, but that was in the stock class or whatever it was. But, yeah, it blew up every moto. And that's why I got 31st. But I thought it was actually worse than that, but 31st I'll take. Um, you beat nine guys. That would be, yeah. Blowing up every, every time. What happened to them? I, they, they must have, you know, DNS. <laughs> Um, so who else did you grow up riding with? You said Stu was a little bit older. But Stu who was, was a little bit older. Who was your group? Like, who did you ride and practice with and race with? Well, in Florida, I mean, Gerke, um, Gerke yeah. Jimmy Keys, who, you know, who quit after Brandon Layton passed away. Mm. Um, Layton always came down to my house, so he was one of them. Um, Chisholm. Uh, God, who... They're so. Can you believe Chiz is still racing? Yeah, it's yeah. like been Chester, twenty years. So or Chester Cheatums was his nickname back in the day. Why? Just because everyone always said he cheated. So oh. Chester Cheatums, and he, it was just a great nickname. Mm. You know, they called me Daisy Mudflaps, and <laughs> it just Chester Cheatums was was brilliant. Um, but I, there's a lot of kids that I know were were really fast. I just they quit really early in mm. um but alessi obviously even jg you know being a little bit older than me um he i, I rode with him when he was out in vegas and Cal in california and stuff and then he quit for that year or whatever he did and mm. then it kind of transferred to where i went was he living back in florida or no, you no, no, just no. see him at amateur i would just yeah. amateur nationals yeah. um i'm practicing with him at world mini like just in a random practice day and he's, you know, a year and a half older than me, but dude, blew my doors off. Mm. I mean, gone. He was and I did whatever I could to kill. I, I mean, the only reason why I beat him is because he ate shit in a right hander after the tail top. I remember to this day, he ate shit and it's the only reason I beat him. But then a few years later, I think he, or that, that year is when he, he quit. I don't remember him quitting. I didn't know that. He quit for like a year and a half. Okay. Um, I want to say, it could be wrong. Don't quote me, JG. Sorry. But I want to say he disappeared for like a year and a half. So it was a long time he disappeared. And then he came back. Um, but yeah, there's just a Partridge was there. Josh Lichtel was there. Um, Shane Bess, Brock Hepler, Brian Gray, Ben Riddle, um, Adam Menninge, Jesse Casillas, um, David Hill. I don't remember that name. Um, I want to say it's David Hill. He was one of the ones, I think he got third at, at U.S. Open um, in 1998. <laughs> the first okay. year, because I was there for the first year. Um, the Brandon Layton was another one. Um, there's, the, the list is That's all there. Jeez, yeah. yeah. But they're a little bit older than me, but I was all, we were all in the same era, you know. And of that group you just named, like, not many make it through. You know? Nah. Yeah, it's nah. crazy. It's, it bums me out that no one did, but... Well, it just shows how yeah. how rare it is, how freaking hard it is. Yeah, you know? it is like for a million different reasons. You know, injury or money or just you don't do well it's at the crazy. right race, and yeah, your career goes this way, and one guy does well and goes. That oh, Villapoto, my bad. Like honestly, the one of the best. Like Villapoto, I was race. In your, yeah, I guess, oh, my my whole yeah. every single race he was there, every mm. single race. I don't know. I don't even and know why I didn't hit him because I know Alessi would smoke him all through amateurs. Same with here. Yeah. Same here. And then again, he decided to grow a big ass pair of balls and grit his teeth and <laughs> and say i'm gonna i'm gonna work my ass off yeah. and y'all what what was it are what, done what, what was it what was the catalyst for him he was willing to put the work in hands down mm. he may not have had the best talent or the most talent on a dirt bike because he i mean let's face it he was a workhorse he could outlast anyone on a dirt bike no matter what it was mm. you know yeah he was fast he can do things but you know for him he was he was willing to do what others weren't mm. you know and and that's what i think separated him from anyone you look at the talent wise look at james you know james could beat any of us so to say on any given night that he wanted to yeah. beat us it was just the consistency and, and the amount of work and the amount of time that rv put into it which i mean you have to give him credit for you know it, it, you have to applaud him for the amount of work that he put in oh yeah i mean being injured the you know one or two times that he was and just to keep going and keep going and keep going and day in and day out, I know the work that he did, and I just wasn't willing to do it. <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's, it, but it's, I'm okay to admit that. You know? Well, 
so I, I had my struggles with with doing yeah. the work, right? Yeah. Like at different times, I, I did work my butt off, but if I if I would grind like some of these guys do, yeah. I ended up hating it. Yeah, you know, like so. I don't know if that was just me being lazy, or, but I would get to the race and I just feel like, man, I don't. I'm but I think RV, this. I think RV hated it. I think he did R- hate it. I think RV hated it. He was just so willing Ricky. to. Ricky, Ricky said the same thing. Yeah, he hated well, it. Ricky. I I grew up riding with him too, but obviously he's way older than me. It just was fun to be you know living a mile and a half from him to be able to yeah. put my gas can in front of my bike and ride down to his house and ride, um, and get yelled at for blowing a turnout that I just watched him do. Oh. <laughs> um, but you know, RV hated it, but yet still was willing to suffer. Mm-hmm. And look, he's living like a king. You know, it, it's one of those things yeah. where for me, I think that I put so much effort and so much time in so young. Um, and as I got older and I got, like, I've said this story a million times around the wrong people led me down a life that made me believe that it's okay to, you know, it's okay to lose. It's okay to go do stuff. It's okay to be, you know, not wanting to ride today. It's okay to be second fiddle to what you really want as a career. And that's where I think my mindset took forever to switch. You know, then I hired Yogi. It's immaturity, right? Well, I think at the end of the day, because it's, I was getting I, a taste of life that you've never had. Yeah. You know, you're young, making money, and then you hire someone, and it's like they show you this other side of life, and you're like, this is way cooler. This is, the, you know, this is, I can still do this and podium. Like, I'll take that. Yeah, you know, I'm still yeah. making good money, like no big deal, you know, and, and the championship became not really a worry for me. It didn't really become an issue. Like, I didn't care at that point. I just wanted to go race. I just wanted to ride my dirt bike. I wanted to have fun. Yeah. You know, not the J-Law way. I just wanted just to go have fun. Yeah. And. You, you try to have like a, a work-life yeah. balance. Yeah, and right? I shouldn't and have done that. It no. doesn't work no. if you want to be an, a Ryan Villapoto. You want to be a Villapoto or a Dungey or a Harmichael, you know. Everything uh, gets put aside. Everything. There's no distractions. There's yeah. zero anything other than waking up, you know, eat, sleep, and breed dirt bikes. It's yeah. literally all it is. And, and, and for me, it took years and years and years. And then, unfortunately, you know, Yogi got it out of me a lot in 13 like a little bit of 12 and 13 when, when I actually trained mm. um, and I actually rode and did motos and, mm. and did stuff like was in 12 and 13 when I got second in points and almost one in 13. Yeah. Um, and then I kind of fell back off the bandwagon. And then in, in 17, after my double wrist surgery at the end of the year, cause I rode almost 17 with almost basically two destroyed wrists, all 17, both the navicular's were broken and all the ligaments, were, most of the ligaments were torn right here in my wrist. And after I had them fixed, you know, I said, you know what? I'm going 18 and that's all I'm doing. Like I'm, I'm done after 18, I'm not gonna do any more. Um, I'm gonna put everything I have into this. And just how one old, last, how one last time, I was 28 years old. So or 20, still, no, 29, 29. Okay, so still, you know, young enough. To, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I put everything I had into it that and was that crash. was my mindset. Yeah. And I started training with everything I had um, at the end of May. And when I got on the bike and I was on the bike for a month before I crashed and I literally had never felt stronger, never felt better, never felt more alive, never felt more in tune. And to this day, hands down, you know, I know Drewski was there as when I, you know, he wasn't there when I crashed, but he was there the same day that I crashed. He just had left, you know, and, and I was stronger, faster <clears throat> and in better shape a month into riding that bike at that time than I was in 2013 tenfold. Really? Tenfold. And I could, I would have ran circles around me in 13 that day that I crashed that day. And it buns me out knowing that because of how strong and fit I was because yeah, I had like, that mindset. If I would have done this in 2000, whatever, pick but your year. dude, it was so easy. It was putting the work in at that point with that mindset that I had, you know, and it, it became so easy that it became fun. It became more of an addiction because I want, I felt, I felt that dude, I can do 20 laps. Cause at the end it's 20 laps. Yeah. I can do, no, no, it was minutes. It just went to minutes, huh? Yeah, yeah, my last race, my last year was minutes. So it, it just had went to minutes. Okay. I'm like, you know what? Like I can do the 20 minutes. I don't get tired. Like, yeah, dude, like this is unreal. I want to do, let's, let's go do these long ride, the long bike rides. Let's go do the long mountain bike rides. I just had done Leadville 50. Like let's, let's, let's go do something else. I want to qualify for the hundred, you know, let's, let's, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I was loving it. Mm-hmm. And the workouts were no big deal. Whenever, however, it didn't matter time of day. And it, it got cut short. But 
you know, that's where for me, it's like, I look back and my wife and I talk about it. That change for me, it's always like, it's, <laughs> I joke with Julian. I joke with, you know, with Benny and my wife and my friends and anyone that I help. It's like the Millsaps mindset. It's literally just that one switch that I made was changing the, the trajectory of, of my life and, and my career. Yeah. And if you can have that switch is the switch that, you know, Ryan had both Ryan's, you know, and Carmichael, it's everything right now. It becomes, a, you might hate it. You might, you hate will it. hate it. Hands down. You will down. hate it for at least a little while. But dude, it yeah. is, it is so much fun when you are in that good of shape when you are that strong and you're that fit and you are just on top of the world, like what Jed is right now, it's literally a different feeling. Mm -hmm. And I only got to feel it for a month on a dirt mm -hmm. bike, but you know, it's one of those things where at least I got to feel it, you know? And, and I had that mindset for a little bit to where I'm like, fuck now I, with Julian, it's like, dude, like put the work in. That's, that's great that you have that experience yeah. and you can, you can, Take Julian Bomer and go, hey, yeah. listen, let me tell you a story. Yeah. You know, I lived this. Yeah. You have you can take two paths right now. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, and he's choosing he's choosing the latter, that's for sure. And and it's a bummer you didn't gosh, it sucks you didn't get to go to some races that way. Yeah. Because and I'm sure you know this, you've probably had moments in your career where you were close to that and you go to the line just going, I got these fools. Yeah. Like when you know you're gonna win or you're gonna battle for the win. Yeah. That's cool. It's, it's a good feeling. It's just, it's hard to get there and stay there. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Okay, we sped way ahead. We're going to, let's step back. <laughs> let's go um, back. When you were younger, who, who was kind of like a big influence on you? Who helped you with, with riding or with racecraft or just, just maybe somebody you rode with that really helped you push forward? Bailey. Gary yeah. Bailey. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's uh, right. You were a Gary Bailey I was guy. a Gary Bailey kid. I hated him. Wow. I hated, oh my God, he made me cry so many times. My fingers to this day still are still scarred. Oh my God. Uh, he had a special stick made just for me because he'd hit me so many times with the stick it stopped hurting. So he had a metal one made and it had a ring around the, a plastic ring around the end. Come on. And he'd whack the crap out of me with it. And one time at Ocala, we were, we were going and it was about my clutch. I hated having my hand on the clutch. It was just, I didn't, I didn't need it. And he got, we were the big group of guys. He got me so good. He got me so good. It was so hard not to tear up. My eyes were tearing. And I was young. I was on the 60. Um, I rode off into the woods up top where everyone was. Wherever, they're going past me. I rode up into the woods. And cried. Well, just to let the tears stop. And because I'm like, I can't stop him. Like, it hurts so bad. I can't stop him. I thought he broke my fingers. Um, but he was he was a big influence. And I think my, you know, my mom being as good as she, you know, as she was back in the day. She learned from Gary. She learned from um, Tishner because I work with Tishner a little bit. Um, I went to Simics once, um, but just being around all the fast guys, whether they're older than me or whatever it was, she would take what I was doing better and what they were doing better and piece it together and create something that I had to do. Something you know, she would show me how to get better. You know, tell me how to get better. Yeah. Um, and I think all of it combined is is where she became you know, the one that was training me yeah. or pushing me on the dirt bike. Hmm. Yeah, that's, it's interesting that she was paying attention and listening and becoming a coach herself, Yes, right? yeah. Because <clears throat> that's what she's doing now. I and mean, she's probably taking all that stuff she learned with you and all those other guys and putting it together. Yeah. Um, so you went to Lorenzo 94, we talked about that. Yeah. Didn't go well. Uh, <laughs> I don't um, even know how I did 95. Well, I'll tell you, we got, we got all your results I right I guess here. you do. 95, you got a 10th. Uh, yeah. In 51, 7 to 8 stock. And then 29th in 65 CC, 7 to 9 stock. So I did a killer. Top 10s, banged it out. And then 96, the following year, you won. Yeah. So you uh, definitely had a good progression there. <laughs> progressed from 31st. 31st to 1st. And then uh, you got, gosh, how many titles? Nine. Nine titles. Yeah, yeah look at this. A few were taken. 97. Why? Alessi. Oh, 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 I got you. And then injuries. You didn't get like DQ'd or anything or something. No, he got me docked. Oh, he did? Yeah, it's where, I mean, anyone in the sport, you know, the rule back in the day used to be anyone old, should I say, where when you exit the track, you have to enter at the same spot. Yeah. That was changed because of me and, and Mike. You have to be enter at the next safest spot. No, now it is. It was where you got to enter where you exit. Oh, so you went off and didn't come right uh -huh. back in the same place and he DQ'd you? Uh-huh. Really? It took a title from me that way. All right. 
<laughs> He's good at that. Two and 97. <clears throat> I thought this was interesting too. You won titles on a 50, a 65, an 85, and a 125. Yeah. Every class you got titles. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Now, I don't think a lot of people can say that. 98, I had two broken wrists. So I tried to race in 98. Okay. Um, but I was in second in the first lap with two broken wrists because I was determined to race. And I got taken out by a kid named Corey Slavic. And You'll never forget his name. Huh? Uh, <laughs> um, and he took me out. Um, and I pulled off the, I, the adrenaline was gone at that point and they hurt so bad. Like I was, I was done. There was no way I was going to probably finish the week anyway. Yeah. So 98 was that. And then I think I won in 99 and then I won in 2000 and 2001. I dislocated my knee, um, tore my ACL, there. my MCL. No, just before it in Spain. Oh. Um, and then, yeah, just on up through the days. When did you pick up? Suzuki support. Well, I guess you were Cobra. First. I was eight. Yeah, so I was Cobra with Bubba Money, the owner, original yeah. owner. Um, and then, and when I was <laughs> eight, so ninety-eight. No, sorry, sorry, ninety-six. I picked up um, Suzuki. Okay. Yeah. Suzuki's amateur program was good back oh, then. Oh, it was. And the bikes were good the at least for a while there. They were. I don't know. If, were they starting to kind of get old by that point? Well, or? the eighty-five is one I created in, in two thousand and one. So that 85 is still the same 85 today, 40 oh, years later. Okay. That's um, what I was going to say. They kind of <laughs> flatten off, kind of no. like their big bikes. But. Yeah. Yeah. But they were good when you yeah, were. Yeah, it's where you wanted yeah. to be. Yeah. You know, it, it's literally where you wanted to be. It's crazy how they've just fallen off the map, huh? I, I hope mean, they can if, get if back. If you look in. back at all the people that they had, you know, between Casey Henson, myself, Tomac, Nico, uh, I keep going back. Buddy Antonez, yeah. Gaddis. Well, you're going, you're going far. Yes. But I mean, I mean, they have this history Riddle, of being bad. Yeah, I mean, you know? everyone wanted to be there. Jeff DeMint. Yeah. Um, Even Ray Johnson was the mentor. Yeah. You know, it's like they. And Hannah. And Hannah. Yeah. It's the way you're going really far. I'm, I'm really old. Yeah. <laughs> I, I went to a Bob <laughs> If you bought a Suzuki or, or you were a Suzuki support guy, you could go to a school, a Bob Hannah school for free. Okay. Yeah. And no, I was, I, I was. What year was this last year? Oh man, eighty. Uh, I don't know. He put me on the spot now. What? Wouldn't have been in the nineties, I don't think. Eighty six. I want to say eighty eight. That was the year I was born. It was though. So, so I would never. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he was done racing at this point, but he was just going around doing schools because it was ninety when I went. Okay, gotcha. Um, okay, so amateur career. Anything? Anything that throughout your amateur career that like stands out to you as like a, a moment where you kind of felt things turn like, okay, I'm going to, I mean, it probably happened pretty damn early because you're winning titles when you're five or whatever. But was there a point where you remember thinking like, I'm good at this? I never cared. Really? I, well, no, I never cared until, oh God, when was it? I, you know, I, when I got, on to, to an 80. Um, I was still winning when I went from a 60 to an 80. Yep. Um, and I was winning, but I wasn't winning everything. You know, there was a lot of fast kids, a lot of fast kids. But I was always having to race against older people that were in Super Mini or 9 or 13 open. You know, never, never in my age group. I'd win my age group, but it, it, the faster guys is what I wanted to beat. Mm -hmm. And when I started beating the faster guys, you know, the... Um, was it the Jimmy Nelson and I would challenge you know Bubba a few times even though he's you know fast on a super mini um, when I beat Brandon Layton I think for the first time it was one of those okay like I, I can go fast yeah. you know because he was the one that everyone wanted to beat mm. um, I don't know if you remember him or what not what happened to him he, uh, he died at Beaumont he got he I guess was riding for the day and they were all done and they had a single track on and around, and everyone was done. He was getting changed, and I guess someone asked him if he could try their bike. And he was like, yeah, okay. So he got back dressed and went to go on it. But some kid stayed out there on the track, but turned around because everyone was done. Oh. And Brandon went out there the same way. And they came over a jump and clipped. Uh, the guy clipped his head with, the, with his bike. Um, and his brain obviously swallowed up and Gosh, killed damn. him. Mm -hmm. um, that was a hard one. Because he was... Were you buddies with him? Yeah, he came to my house for a month and a half every year. Mm -hmm. Like, almost almost more than that. Every year he's at my house. Um, yeah, he is, 
he was one of my really good friends. Mm. Um, so when he when he passed, it was it was a heavy hit. Yeah. But ah, when I think I beat him at, at Gainesville the one time, I, to this day I remember the exact race. I literally got the whole shot and he didn't. But it didn't matter where he started, he was winning. Oh yeah. And he couldn't catch me. And I'm like, I I could not stop smiling. Could not stop smiling. And I don't think I I never had a chance to race him again. But that was on what 80s. That was 80s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he died on an 80. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that time and and just week after week after week, it was like, okay, like these guys can't, you know, they can't beat me. So then it became, what's next, you know? So were you still like you said you didn't really care? Were you, were, were I just you, wanted to win. Okay. I didn't. I didn't care. But you didn't put a lot of pressure on yourself. No, I didn't or? care about going. Like I wanted to go pro. Like as far as like I knew where I wanted to be, I thought it'd been cool. But I, all I cared about was winning. All I cared about was Lake Whitney, Mosier, you know, World Mini, just winning. That's yeah. that's all I cared about. Mm-hmm. Didn't matter. Didn't matter what else was going on. Just gave my dirt bike and let me have fun. Let's talk about your pro debut. Yep. Um, Fantastic debut. <laughs> so, uh, well, it was 2004. Yeah, Minneapolis. I, know I forgot at. about this until I was kind of prepping, and I realized you, you had to miss the first round because uh-huh. you were 15. Yeah, they, they pulled me up a little too early. Yeah, like I'm thinking t- these days you would have just stayed amateur mm-hmm. till the Nationals probably and jumped in at the Nationals, right? Yep. But you just missed the opening round, went to the next race. On a two-stroke. This was 125 two-stroke, dude. Yeah, yeah, but they gave Hepler the four-stroke. Oh, he's going to see how there would be four strokes, huh? Uh-huh. Mm. Why they gave him the four stroke over me, I have no idea. So what do you remember from your first race? Was it Minneapolis? You Josh Hansen taking me out. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Hanny got you good? Mm-hmm. We still talk about it today, actually, at you the do. track. We literally talked about it every day. Every day I see him. I've been taken out, I think, two times in my entire life. My entire pro career, I was taken out twice, both by him. Really? Yeah, both by him. Got your number. Yeah, dog, yeah. he found a way. <laughs> <laughs> um, he took me out. I was passing him in the heat race in Minneapolis and he cut pretty hard going into the whoops and we were going into them. Like there's a rut in the center and I was going around him and I was jumping in to go past him and he cut so hard. I, I, I died. Just took your front wheel out. Gone. Sawed it off. Yeah. And, and then Dallas, he took me out in 2005 the next year. Okay. Yeah. So the pro debut, that's probably the, that and not making the triples. I couldn't make the triples. Either one of them? J- uh, James was making it from the inside, not an issue on two-stroke. Not me. They had to shorten them for me. Mm. I literally was giving everything I had. What did you weigh by then? You were still 175. Probably, yeah, so you're a big boy. 175 or 178 on a multiplied two-stroke. And Hepler weighing a buck 30 on the four-stroke made a lot of sense. Mm. Um, still, that still irritates me, by the way. Why would they do that? I guess they wanted to push both. He was three years or two and a half years older than me or whatever it was. So yeah. I was so used to riding a two-stroke. They thought that had been a good idea to leave me on it, which I get. I understand their thinking. In but, theory, right? But no, not a, no. they thought their bike was way faster than what it was maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Well, they're, you know, their two-strokes were good, but they weren't. You just can't. They went downhill when I came pro. They did. Yeah. 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 Because they were going four stroke route, so the two stroke kind of got shafted. Yeah, it's true. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so but it, you didn't take long. Um, third, um, third race. Third race that season was Daytona, and mm-hmm. you got second. Yeah, that's pretty quick. You know, not bad. Yeah, it's not yeah. bad. Right? <laughs> um, what? Tell me about that kind of weeks in between there. Were you like, I was yeah, this is gnarlier than I thought, or no? At, at Atlanta, which was the second round. I ate shit and couldn't race. Oh. I crashed in the main. Okay. And didn't finish. I mean, I was not, I was doing so good and a complete dog crap. Mm. And my bike was destroyed. But your times were good. You could kind yeah. of see like, I don't know. They didn't really have times. But lap times. I mean, you're kind of I, I don't remember back then. They didn't really do like, uh, it was qualifiers to get in. Yeah, that's right. Um, qualifiers. Hmm. And Friday practice. All right. So you put me at Daytona. Yeah. How did that like, so that that was, was that one kind of like I made it. Type that of was one of those ones where, you know, it was James with the whole shot. Who won, James? James, yeah, okay. James with the whole shot, and then it was um, Hanson mm-hmm. and a few other people, and then me. And I passed everyone the first lap, and I caught up to Josh, 
and obviously Josh back then, you know, he loved himself. Um, and <laughs> it was one of those just running his mouth, always running his mouth. I still talk to him this day about it. And you let the on, on, off section and you landed and you went down this, when Gary built it, he had these oh, weird gosh. whoop things all the way on the straightaway. And I pinned it so hard and blew past him down that whoop, whatever straight away. And I was like, I just got you, you know, like I got you. And I knew once I got in front of him, he wasn't going to pass me on those tracks. You know, he's not an outdoor rider. So that became one of those things where I just have to outlast him. Yeah. And that to me was, was a win just beating Josh there, you know, growing up with Josh. It's another one I grew up with Mm -hmm. watching him. He was obviously older than me, but just watching how good he was. Mm -hmm. And then when he went pro and everything and he was on a four stroke and then he took me out. So I was already pissed. And so me beating him was that, oh. that and then good. James almost ate shit or he almost did eat shit that night as well. Was he on a four stroke in 04? Two strokes. Still one strike. Yeah. And he almost crashed really bad, um, which would have given me the youngest win ever on Supercross. Mm-hmm. But granted, that wouldn't have been a fair win because I didn't beat him straight up. Um, but yeah, that was Daytona for me. Mm-hmm. That was fun. That was a fun night. Especially yeah. being hometown. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What a fun way. What yeah. a huge race to go out and get your first podium. Um, so you were kind of already feeling like, okay, I belong doing this Yeah. at that point. But yeah. I couldn't get a whole shot or a start to save my life. Yeah. To make it easy, if anyone goes back and watches Pontiac, yes, Pontiac, 04. <laughs> I'll that you'll, under, you'll understand how bad my starts were. It, you guys will laugh. DL. I was dead last <laughs> and I was so last I took a left and beat everyone almost out of the first turn because I was so bad and so just far back. Just hugged it real tight. Just hugged it. I was able to hug it so tight I came out third That's or fifth or something like that. Uh, what about your first summer of outdoors? You got a podium at Red Bud, but it and seemed Dilla. like if we're looking through the results here, it took, a little, been took a little bit to get going. Let's see here. Yeah, third at Pontiac. You did get a, another yep. podium there. Second at Daytona. 25th at Southwick, a little rough. Yeah, I got tired there. Um, third at Broom. <laughs> yeah, Broom, I was good. Uh, second at Redbud, yeah. So, and I mean. What, what about Dilla? Uh, Unit Dilla, you were ninth. Ninth, okay, so it was yeah. next year I podiumed. Yeah. So, not, I mean, you know, pretty damn good rookie season, a couple podiums, and. Oh, I, was, I was out of shape. And that was my <laughs> that was my first summer on a four stroke, so it was new to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so going to um, 2005. And yeah. this really, looking through these results, I, f- I forgot about this, but this, you should have won this title. Yeah. I didn't mean to bring up old shit. But <laughs> <laughs> um, the I, gave that one, I gave that one away. Yeah, the Daytona thing with Troy Adams cost you. Um, well, no, it wasn't even the Troy Adams thing, which to this day, he's a Florida boy, so it still hurts worse. Mm-hmm. By the way, Troy, if you're listening, I still hold on to that now? grudge. Sure, I, I, I don't know, you. but he I used to be one of my friends. Oh, not anymore after well, that? Well, I know I hated him for a long time, mm. but obviously I got over that when I learned that it was my fault, really, that cost me the championship. Because that, that race, um, I was dead last because I got taken out in the second corner by Joaquin Rodriguez. Okay. And I was catching back up. I went from last to third, you know, where Troy was. Yeah. I was like two and a half seconds a lot faster than everyone on the track. When Troy cross jumped me, took me out, my bike was so mangled and the finish line was right there, I buzzed right past it. So I got, I didn't get a lap in. Oh no. So that cost me. So instead of being eighth place, which I would have been had I crossed the finish line, they, they scored me in like 15th or 18th, whatever it was, because I didn't cross the finish line that one lap. You went like around the- I went around uh, the finish line. Had oh I gone over the finish gosh. line, I would have won the championship, hands down. Really? Yeah. So yeah, Troy cost me my, crazy mental delusion thing, you know, scatterbrained, but how'd I go to the finish line? Ah. Yeah, that was, that was, that's a tough one to, that was a hard one to swallow. Yeah. yeah. One finish line. Did you know that like that, that night when you got back to the pits? They- no, no, it was not. I think everyone was letting it settle <laughs> knowing, but, and then I also almost threw I threw it away at, at, uh, the last round. Okay. Which I don't remember the last round was. Um, but I threw it away there too. In 05? I was, yeah, I was passing Hanny for the lead and lost the front. Yeah, well, wherever it was. Dallas? No, anyway. Yeah, the last, no, the Dallas, it wasn't Dallas, it was, it was, 
whatever whatever race it was. But yeah, I threw it away there too. Okay. Well, yeah. Oh five would have been well Pontiac and then Vegas. But, so then Pontiac then. So I threw it away to Pontiac. Mm. I didn't know even back to Pontiac in 05. Yeah. Must uh, have been the last one or getting close. Um still, good year, right? I mean, mm-hmm. um and were you on in 05? Were you on the four stroke? Yep. Okay. Yep. And you won the East West shootout. Yes. Was that a good like at least a little bit of redemption for you? Yeah, it was it was great. It was <laughs> great. It was great. I mean it was it was fantastic. And met my wife that night. I was good to go. Oh, you did? Huh? Was she Miss Supercross? No, she won Miss Supercross that night. Back when oh, it was yeah. actual competition. Yeah, that's right. Versus, you know. People, how did they vote on her or whatever? I remember. Um, they voted. She won Miss Phoenix. And then she went to Vegas with like obviously 16 others or 15 others. And they had a competition and she won. So how did you meet her? Just on the podium. Start chatting her up. So in the press conference when they had it back in the day, she was standing in the back and no one would talk to her. So I did. Hmm. And was talking from there on out. Hmm. Yeah, it was not a big deal, just talking. Yeah. You know, she was standing all alone. She's a pretty girl. <laughs> I'm like, what's up? What's up, girl? <laughs> yeah. You didn't have any good line or anything? Just started chatting her. Chatting well, I mean, I, I won. That helps. So That does help. <laughs> so, so you look back and like, hey, hi, I'm David. Do you know how much money I just made? I, it wasn't about the money. <laughs> it wasn't about the money. I was, wearing a, I was wearing like gold and purple, so I was already you know, somewhat like nervous. <laughs> I got to win. I'm wearing gold and purple. Look like a Oakland pimp. <laughs> um, okay, so what about outdoors that year in 05? How'd that go? Not terrible. Actually, 05, Dilla, I was actually doing really good on Bike Blew Up the last lap. I was, I think I was... Second overall at Dilla yeah. that year, yeah. Yeah, but I was. No, you know what? It was 04, Dilla. Oh. Uh, or 04, 05, one of them I Bike Blew Up on the last lap. I think James missed that race. Probably, probably 04 because yeah. you were ninth yeah. over. Yeah, so, um, and Walker was in there. Oh, yeah? Uh, the stalker. I think, he, I think he won it or got second or something really? like that. Really? Yeah. But, yeah, 05 was good. <sighs> Wasn't bad. Signed with Honda. Yeah, tell me about that because you were, um, you've been staring at a yellow fender for a long time. Between Nine Cobra years. And then Suzuki. Well, you know, count the Cobra. It goes way back. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but then I had Cowie as a 60. <sighs> oh, okay. Yeah. So, what was the why did you stay with Suzuki? What I mean, obviously, Honda comes calling, and well, so yeah. Honda and Yamaha called, and you know, Cowie was mad, Mitch was mad that I didn't sign with him before I went pro, so I didn't get a call from Cowie again, oh, okay. Um, and which I wish I would have signed with before I went pro, but Mitch's bikes, but it, it was you know, so it, was, God, it was so good compared to it was we had the same 250F, but his was just so far ahead of ours, oh, yeah, um, but it was. You know, my mom convincing me to, to do it out of loyalty to Suzuki. And I look back now and I'm like, this this sport is not at all. They don't give two shits about you whatsoever. So. Um, Especially the factories. Yeah. This is the thing. Like a guy like Mitch, I've seen this firsthand. When I yeah. broke my femur in 96, he came to the hospital. He goes, hey, don't worry about it. You got to ride next year. Mm-hmm. Don't even think. And this was four rounds into the series. Yeah. That a factory doesn't do that. No. Right. So, so, yeah. so you, I wish I would have went. You'd have been better off going to Mitch. Is there at least there's a little bit of loyalty? Look how long he's been holding out with Forkner and how long he held Cincirillo. You know what that's, I mean? It's crazy. But Honda called, Yamaha called, and they both came down and tested with me. So to say, Yamaha actually came down and tested bikes, and Honda just brought shorties. Hmm. That's all they had. And I rode the Yamaha one, and I struggled on it. I struggled. They had a slipper clutch in it. Was that a YOT bike? or? Mm, it was a YOT bike, but it was the factory bike. Yeah. I was going to be under the factory rig. Okay. Um, but I couldn't ride it. I struggled riding that bike. And then Honda came, and I rode against my Suzuki, and I was four seconds faster on it than on my Suzuki. Mm. And I'm like, where's, where's no, the dotted line? Yeah, where do I see? Yeah. So that's basically all it was. And then... <laughs> what was your deal? How many years? Uh, three. Okay. At... When I signed, the next week was Glen Helen. And okay, the last race was Glen Helen. Okay. And I literally knocked my ass out right in front of Kehoe. Oh, <laughs> I'm, really? I'm like, great. But it wasn't to where like I was knocked out unconscious. I, I hit my head really hard. It was on Muddy Creek. Or sorry, whatever that. Muddy Buds, Creek. Bud's Creek, they call it. 
whatever. No, yeah. the money straight away. They call it Bud's Creek. Okay, Bud's Creek, whatever. Yeah, Bud Felt. And they had like the rollers in it. Yeah. I think uh, Heath Voss crashed in it really hard there. Some people crashed in it really hard um, the morning after because I crashed on, on practice. Okay. And they got rid of it for the mains. And I'm like, of course they did. So I went to the hospital because I had internal damage that the doctors said I need to go get looked at and they're not going to let me race. So I went. Nothing ended up being wrong, but I had a lot of pain in my diaphragm, so they wanted to make sure there wasn't anything wrong with my lungs Blood and stuff. Up, yeah, because yeah. um, I hit hard mm -hmm. right in front of Kehoe. Mm -hmm. But then after that, yeah, on it I went. So that was for 06, right? Yep. 06, 7, 8, 9, 10. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. But I only signed it three years, you know. Yeah, three years originally. Yeah. Um, all right, so take me through that season. Um, and explain that how much better was that Honda factory bike than the Suzuki? <laughs> Night and day. I mean, you just said four I, seconds flat, but. I mean, it wasn't even, mm. and it wasn't even on the same planet. Mm. Like, it was so good. And that Suzuki was, like you mentioned, that was the, the uh, joint deal between Cowie and Suzuki. Yeah. It was the same bike, yep. different plastics which I kind of understood, like trying to share that burden of cost, building a new motorcycle from the ground up, but Honda doesn't waste money. Or, you know what I mean? They, save, try to save pennies. Oh, they they did, and they did in nine and 10. <laughs> well, we'll get to that, the funny car. But, but yeah, no, the 06 Honda 250 was insane. And I don't, I don't think there was ever a better bike, ever. Well, the 08, I think that, the 08, that the 08, bike kept getting refined. The 08 like, 450 for me is when I was on. I was on 250. So the 450 08 was really good. I just was already in that mindset because I had already just went like this with my mom. Mm. I was already in that mindset of, you know, yeah, everything sucks in, in life anyway. So well, let's go talk about 06. Yeah. You crushed that season. Yeah. Uh, your results, I looked through <laughs> one, two, one. One, two, two, one. I yeah. mean, like, dude. Yeah. When second's your worst finish, that's <laughs> that's not. I didn't right. have a choice. My podiums were first and second oh. for, for bonuses. Okay, well. I put my third you put in. put some money in, in the bank. Yeah. Or your mom's <laughs> bank. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was 18 at the time. Um, and then I thought this was weird. I don't remember this, but you rode the 450 outdoors. Yep. Just because you're a big kid, like made sense, huh? I was but that's still kind of a hard sell. I was 195 pounds. Oh, yeah, that's big. Well, oh, sorry, 100. And, I was 190 pounds. Sorry, on the year that I won the championship on a 250F, I was a big kid. Yeah, there was no such thing as a diet for me. It was just strictly riding. I didn't really do much training off the bike. I, there was not much, you know. I did push-ups and sit-ups and pull-ups and yeah. and dips and punch the bag and jump rope, but I didn't really. I hated running and I hated cycling, so it really didn't exist in my life. Really, um, didn't really know about it back then. Yeah. Um, Ricky did, but we didn't. We didn't have you know. We didn't have an Alden. Yeah. So. Well, that was still kind of new, at that time. You know, early two thousands is when everybody started developing programs like that uh, yeah we're not us we we had a trainer i know that like i went to a gym but it was a lot of weights yeah. you know a lot of strength training yeah and i was already a big kid like it just didn't you didn't need that didn't yeah. mesh but then the outdoors yeah i got third in points um yeah so it was third a, behind rc and Wyndham. yeah well I mean, k and i battled to the last race at Glen helen i i think he only beat me by a couple points in the championship yeah i was That's i pretty wanted dang him good, so bad um, but yeah, that was the only full year I finished. <laughs> what happened in Vegas? I know she got 20th in the shootout. Uh, yeah, I was passing shorty for the lead and lost the front end. Did you get hurt or just, no, just, oh, it just tweaked my bars oh, okay. to the point to where they were not able to be fixed. And even outdoors, like I'm trying to count them up here. You got one, two, three, four. You had a bunch of podiums, man. Like you yeah. got a good summer. Yeah. So yeah, I think great, I had, I think I had six podiums in that year outdoors. Six out of 12. Jeez. All right, go to 07. Yeah. Um, Broke my femur in 06 to go into 07. Yeah, what happened? Crashed at home. Broke my femur. Missed half the first year mm -hmm. of my Supercross debut. Tried to get Honda to let me go back to 250F to ride East Coast to bat, you know to defend my championship because I'm like, hey, look, like I'm going to miss the half the year anyways. Let me go back. I'm like, no. Nope, 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 nope. Did they have a 250 guy? They had Tommy. That was it. 
call me Han. And, but I'm like, let me race it, please. Like, let me back it up. And they're like, no. Why? <laughs> I don't know. They would never give me a reason. Mm-hmm. So I came out, debuted at 14th at Atlanta <laughs> in, seven, in 2007. But I just had started riding. You know, yeah. I brought my femur in Octo- October. Started riding in, in December and came out in, in February to race. Hey, December, that's pretty quick. Yeah. I was riding around one-legged a lot. Well, yeah, because I, when I broke my femur, you limped for like four months, five months. I mean, like you saw you, how crooked my knee was for seven years of my life. It just kind of went long. I just had a gimp. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, I came out, debuted at Atlanta. I got 14th and slowly worked myself back into shape and then podiumed in Seattle. Okay. That was my first podium. And then I want to say I knocked my ass out of Vegas. Yeah, second in Seattle. You were fourth at Irving. Uh, Vegas was 21st, so... I got knocked out in Vegas for like a minute and a half. Did you get a lot of knockouts? Three. Not very many, but three. One was a minute and a half. One was, from what I'm gathered, a minute at Bud's Creek when I lost my kidney. Okay. Um, and and the last then one was... The last Vegas. one was over 10 minutes. So that's what the one that did me in. We'll get there. Um, <laughs> so started the Nationals over the fourth, third at High Point. Um, and then a little bit of rough... Finishes the rest of that summer. But it's hard coming back from a femur, dude. Like, even mentally, did that affect you a little bit? Well, that's the summer that everything went down, too. So it was a rough summer for me. With your family? Yes. That mm-hmm. was that was, that was was the summer that I went down. So I became half, you know, a little bit into it because um, Southwick was pretty early in the season back in the day. Um, and that's when everything went down. Yeah. So that's, oh, that's right. the season became tough for me. Yeah, and I, I don't, I don't want to, if you don't want to talk much about this, I know there's a lot of people that have heard you you sort of have a split with your family. Yeah. And I thought it was over something to do with the Millsaps training facility. No. And you, you said that wasn't it. It was more. She, I mean, it's all due to do my wife. Yeah. Yes. Which yeah. is man, it's such a shame. Like, I mean, I was 19, you know, and, and had a girlfriend and it's just like, just let me be. Yeah. But it came to where, you know, she thought that my wife had said something, said something about how I didn't need her anymore, which never was said. It was a made up, story that my wife did the person that said it actually Jeff Stanton I actually he knows he said it we could we talked about it right about this year he was real he's like dude I'm so sorry I'm like dude, it's so old I it's ruined not, your family it's, but it's not like he didn't mean yeah, to yeah. like create this you know to create the drama but yeah it was you know something that and he was just saying hey time for you to time for me to, to grow adult. up and yeah, and, yeah. and step up really yeah um stop being a mama's boy step up and that's basically, yeah, it wasn't happening. Mm. So <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, she, she hates my wife and that's, that's, that's just what it is. And there's no way of you're ever gonna, you know, say otherwise. So, and you know, I mean, I think people will take different stances on it, but it's like when you, especially once you get married, you know, yeah. you and your wife become your own family. Yeah. And that needs to be the priority. And if that means, you know, if your parents can't get on board with that, then it's like that's their loss, right? That's how no, I, I was. I wasn't married, but it was, you know, oh seven. I was married. But how long have you been married now? Uh, yeah, a long time. Be, I mean, fif- be fifteen and in, yeah. in, in September. But, I'm pretty sure she's there to stay. <laughs> <laughs> but know? she, you know, the the thing for me is, at nineteen years old, I had to ask permission to see my girlfriend, and I'm like. I mean, last time I checked, I could drive, I could fly, go you know, war. I could go to war, <laughs> and I was paying for her flights. Not you, not anyone else, wow. me. So, well, that's where that's pretty anyway, much where that's where it ended. That's, you know, that's too bad. I'll and just to this that. day, it hasn't really gotten any better. Nothing, nothing's changed. There's been too many things that have been said. To ever, to ever, I think, unfortunately, get back. You know, you know, my my grandma's last wishes before she died was, you know, to she wished that we would have a relationship again. Mm. But there's just, I think, there's just too much that has been said between the last, you know, sixteen years that is just not. It's, yeah. it's, that's. A I shame. have a family. I have two kids, and that's what that's what matters. Yeah. So it's good. Yeah. I'm happy either way. All right, well, let's talk about 08. Yeah. Um, so at this point, everything's good. The femur's healed up by the end of the, by the end of 07 going into 08, right? Yes. 
And that bike, like I said, that 08 bike, man, I feel like if you had a factory, a 2008 factory Honda right now, you could go out and it's, I don't think you're going to be much slower than a modern bike. No. That, that bike, thing was good. Looking back, yes. Looking at the time, back, you didn't think so? No. Really? I was just in it. That's, that's the first year, really, that I had a different trainer. Mm. I was... Which was who? Johnny Louch. Okay. And just going down a different path that, you know, yeah, I was riding a bicycle. I lost a lot of weight. I was doing, you know, going to the gym sometimes. I wasn't doing a lot of motos. I wasn't doing a lot of, mm. you know, I wasn't doing a program like what RV was, you know, doing or like Dungey or, or Carmichael. I was literally, if I didn't want to ride, okay, let's go home. You know, there was no, mm. no one held me accountable. Um, would you say if, if you had to tell people the most important thing, like even if you don't ride the bike or go to the gym, you've just got to do the bike work. Like, would you say that's the most important thing? Yeah. Because everybody, whether it's Villaman or RC or whoever, these guys that were really successful, they did a crap ton of riding. And I didn't. Hmm. I, I would do a moto a week, maybe. Hmm. I didn't want to do it. Well, it's like if you're a runner and you're swimming laps and you're yeah. jumping rope it's like but you don't swim you're yeah. gonna get in the pool and you're gonna get tired <laughs> i mean you yeah. need to do the thing yeah. that you're trying it's, to do well right? that's so i'd go out and and i would be you know podium and winning but i really wouldn't i would just be riding in my comfort zone yeah. so i wouldn't get tired so that part sucked for me how good could you have been <laughs> everyone says that yeah. and truly like looking back yeah i probably had you know a lot of talent obviously you know, things on the dirt bike became, you know, they were so easy for me to do. Yeah. And just the drinking and the eating like crap. I would eat freaking coffee cakes every morning before I'd go race. You know, like legit trying to win races off of coffee and coffee donuts. And, and alcohol and donuts and, you know, at, at a young age was unfortunate, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, but when you get a taste of that life at a young age, it's like, I, <laughs> this is fun. You know? Yeah, it's hard. People are really tough on kids. And I, and I used to be one of them, I, admittedly. Like, I gave, I've given younger riders since I've been done and in the media a hard time when they make bad decisions. Of course you have. And as every, I've gotten Every older, media guy has. I know, but as I've gotten <laughs> older, like, people are just hammering on Hayden Deegan right now yeah. about his behavior, you know, when things don't go his way. And I, I'm trying to reserve it and just go give him some time. He's a kid. He's 17. What is he? 18. Know? He's, he's an adult. He, well, okay, he's an adult, <laughs> but he's young. Yes. We, especially boys, we're idiots at 18. Yes. You know, and so I, I hope he doesn't go full metal militia, but like if, just give him some time. Hey, you know? with what they're saying or what they said about his, with Brian pulling him in to have a family meeting and the way he acted last weekend and how he was riding, it's like maybe Brian yeah. really laid into him because that was badass. Yeah. Like how he acted and how he was way more mature racing. Two people, right? Yeah. I mean, he was night and day. So whatever family meeting happened, I mean, more power to Brian for that yeah. one. Hands down. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But so no, I, I, yes. I try to be more patient yeah. when, I, when I hear, you know, kids making bad choices. I just go, well, just. I made a lot of them. Yeah. And you know, you know and, and, but that's life. You are making a lot of money <laughs> living on your own. Yes. And you know, like still, doing those making those bad choices still getting on the box and winning yeah. races here and there like yeah, it was it was what, what's the motivation for you to stop exactly my point it was like i said riding dirt bikes was easy yeah you know and and it was just putting the work in that i didn't want to do yeah. you know and um it's unfortunate but again it, it's like i had i not lived through that i wouldn't be able to i would say coach mentally physically yeah. and emotionally with my guys like Julian and Benny and, um, and just the fact of, dude, I've, I've been there, I've done it. I've done the worst of the worst when it came to ha not wanting to train and being lazy, you know? Yeah, I was, I was a hundred percent lazy and that's just what it's, it's been my whole life, you know? And, and so that mill sets mindset mentality of, of <laughs> let's switch that. I'm able to give that to them because I have lived it. I learned it, you know, and it was a lesson for me. Yeah. Um, so now it, it's, dude, you can't, you can't, you, I'm watching Julian go from a B rider one year ago to where he's a pretty fast freaking little kid. Yeah. 
you know, and, and he, dude, the work ethic he has and the amount of grit he has, it started off the same way. Like, oh, he got good. And then it's like, oh, it became easy. I'm going to take the shortcut. I let it go for a while. And then I, I made him switch one day to show him. And since that day, he's never gone back taking a shortcut. Yeah. And it's just one, one, I let him fall for a few weeks pretty hard. He was getting really tired. Yeah, but I saw what he was eating. I saw what he was, wasn't drinking. It wasn't taking snacks. I didn't really care. I was, you know, I'm good now. No, 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 no. But that one little switch. And since that day, what can I do? What more can I do? I want more. Like, you know, I, I, wanna, I want pain. You know, I want to suffer. It's like he has that mindset. And that's for me to instill into someone like that from everything that I've learned. That's cool. Yeah. Especially yeah. as someone that young. Yes. For someone that young to understand and kind of embrace that suffering. Yeah. That's rare. Very and rare. And will has the, the least potential to yield really good results. Wow. Um, all right. So you got your first win in 08 at Atlanta. Hometown yep. race. Hometown. Only Georgia never do it. Oh, is that right? Yeah. 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 Yogi. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He has, he has more wins than me. Roasted Yogi. Big he time. has more wins than me. Um, that's pretty cool though. Was yeah. that like top, maybe top race of your life? Would you oh, say? I mean, ranks up there pretty good. <laughs> that and that Detroit that year. And I would say San Diego and Salt Lake city in 13, those two years, or okay. those two, those four races, I think were Anaheim one 13. Yeah, no, that was a great race, but it wasn't like a, it was it was a good race. Yeah, I won. You'd already won some races, so. But yeah. Atlanta, yeah. But you know, with with you know Chad crashing out right when I was on him, he you know he crashed, and then yeah. I could see Kada behind me, and him Kada being older, wiser, more mature. You know, he has ten years on me. I let him know that every weekend too. Um, Got a thick skin to hang out around you. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, because I was on the fifty watching k-dub race high point number eight on a 122 one sorry the 250 two show yamaha Jeez. i was on a 50. Yeah. now i'm racing him yeah. on a 450. so I, that's like that's crazy one that's cool yeah i mean i'm racing k-dub like that's cool but when he was behind me it was the same thing every lap he wouldn't go away yeah. You know, I can see him far enough away to where I'm like, I can breathe, I can breathe, but I'm so nervous because I'm leading. And I'm like, it's only really my first full season. Every lap, he wasn't budging. I'm like, I know Kata might get tired. He usually gets tired. Mm. Never got tired. And he was always there. Mm. And the last lap, I almost ate shit. Was this Atlanta? This is Atlanta. Yeah. My hand came off the last lap. Oh, and there was a rhythm section at the finish line, and you go left for a triple. But he landed on flat ground, like flat corner, and I hit a bump, my hand came hand came off oh. but yeah that was atlanta so that was but then we swept the podium hana did so it was me was k-dub there? and shorty oh sure and that was a cool night but it was it was cool because i know k-dub was pumped for me yeah you know and and it was just one of those things where you grow up watching a guy and then you know yeah it's pretty sweet yeah um you you started that season a little slow too, like seven fourteen nineteen. I know I sucked at Anaheim one. I sucked at the West Coast rounds, all of them. But then it turned on three two three yeah. one two. I mean you. I think I had twelve podiums that year. Yeah, you rattled it off pretty yeah. good. I think I had ten, maybe ten. And even outdoors here, three four five three three. I mean you were you were. When I got hurt. Oh, you did. Red bud. Okay, what happened? Thirty uh, fourth. <laughs> that's, that's not a good end. <laughs> Um, separated my shoulder and again, I blamed the bike, but it wasn't the bike. I was out of shape, mm. um, but it was one of those me blaming the bike, but everyone had me believing that, you know, it was the bike. Everyone had me believing that it was something else. That's why you don't want a yes man in your corner. Yeah. I, and, you and I mean? it's, I, I had plenty of those. I'm not saying that it was just my trainer, but it was more than just my trainer. It was everyone around me was yes, man. I talked to Kehoe and I was talking to Stan and just, Stanton this year at Redbud and Kehoe when I saw him a couple years ago I'm like why didn't you fucking grab me and just put your foot down I'm like you were my boss like you saw it you tell me you saw it you tell me now that you saw it why didn't you stop it and he's like well you just, I didn't know what to do I'm like you were my boss mm -hmm. like put your foot down you know and I even I 
I tell a lot, everyone that, you know, you know, Brittany was like, I tried. I'm like, well, she's the only one that did, you know, and then Carlos, obviously I'm like, Carlos, you should have wringed my neck. Mm-hmm. You know, you were basically like my dad growing up. You should have wringed my neck, but it wasn't, it, it wasn't them. I was an adult. So it's just, it's just part of it. But, oh, wait. Well, and they, and they also can't, if, if you're saying, oh, it's the bike, it's not whatever. Yeah, but they knew Before very well they, I wasn't in shape. Right. <laughs> but they also can't go, no, it's not the bike. It's, because I guarantee you, 08, I don't even know how old I was in 08, but I guarantee you probably after Red Butt, after I was done, I was probably having a drink. Hmm. Why? I was, was I 21? Yeah, probably 21. I mean, I was able to, obviously. Yeah. But why? You know, and I didn't, I didn't care. It was one of those, like, oh, I can just, I'll be fine. I'll, I can podium and be out of shape. I just have to pin it for a few laps and let these guys <laughs> fade, yeah. and I can keep them in my sight. But Red Bud, it was funny, like, Burn and I, because I was racing against Michael, and I just had, I think I just had passed him, and I was in front of him for a lap. I hated racing that fool, because every time I would pass him, whether it be Supercross or Motocross, I'd have to come from behind and pass him. And by the time I got to him, I was so tired. <laughs> dragging ass. I was dragging ass, but I was still going fast. And then every time he'd latch onto me. And it's like, can you stop? Like he's like, he followed my lines and he would literally latch on for the entire rest of the moto uh, and wear me down. Sometimes he'd give me back, but he would wear me out. Redbud was one he of them. He knew your deal. Oh, he like, knew my oh, deal. <laughs> he's like, I, he's like, if I can latch on, he's gonna wear out. Um, Redbud coming down before the off camera thing. Yeah. I was going down, it was wide open, and it was, we were going so fast. And going down this way, and Burns behind me, next thing I know, I'm looking him in the eyes. Swapped? I swapped all the way around, looked at him, and then was gone. Oh, yeah. Um, all the way down the hill. Hit Bro- your head? No, I oh, didn't okay. knock out. I okay. just, I rolled for about a mile. Wow. And separated my shoulder, like stage four. Um, didn't have surgery on or anything like that. Tried to race two weekends later. Fell on it again. Took me out for that was I think Bud's Creek. Um, tried to come back and then I, I think I finished the season. I want to say I finished the season, but I missed a few rounds. Um, I think I podiumed in a weight at Glen Helen. Um, well, let's have a look. Bud's Creek. Let's see. Thunder Valley. You podiumed High Point and Thunder Valley. Yeah. In Glen Helen. Yeah. Um, and the last one was at Bud's, which is weird. I don't remember that being the last race, but anyway, fourteenth there. Um, yeah, I, I so always did sucked remember that look, did you Oh yeah, go, oh, oh yeah. I mean, I we still talk about it this day. He goes, "I remember looking you right in the eye." <laughs> He's like, "That was not a good feeling." Jeez. Okay, so going to 09, that bike sucked. <laughs> that bike was terrible. Mm, Honda, that that's giving it credit. Honda started over, and uh, you just go, "Man, how can you get it so wrong?" How do they get it? How do they go from being so right to so wrong? That's what I'm saying, and and you know what. <laughs> I had Townley. I was managing Troy's team that year, and I had Townley on. Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember seeing you. So I was, like, trying everything to try to yeah. get that bike to fuel. Um, no, there was nothing. There was nothing helping that bike. It was uh, – I had multiple offers from, you know, 08 for me doing yeah. whatever. And I had different races or different teams that, that wanted oh, yeah. me. Oh, yeah, 08 would have been the end of your contract. Yeah. Okay. And because I went 06, and I signed for two more years, 07 and 08. Okay. Um, and I'm like, I called MC, because he's the only one that had ridden the bike. Okay. And no, they, I had to sign without riding the bike, and I didn't like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, MC, how is it? Like, honestly, how is it? And he goes, you know how the front end, how you lose the front end on the on you know this bike, and, and it's just you just don't know. I'm like, yeah, like I struggle with that. Yeah. And he goes, it's gone. It's this bike is so good. I'm like, done. Did he ride? He rode a pre-production though. Mm-hmm. Probably. Yeah. And so I signed and I see him when I saw him not too long ago, we joked about it and I'm like that. He goes, that was a back haul. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's like, sorry, dude, to give Jeremy some credit, like pre-production to production. Yeah. Sometimes stuff goes sideways. You know, it went way sideways. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it went sideways and South and, and, and upside down. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was. So how did that year go? I, I terrible. It did, went terrible. No, I mean, Podium Daytona. Well, yeah, the that's the one. That's the one where. Um, Is that mud? No, but I took out Alessi the last lap. I crashed. That's when Burner was in my front wheel on that big pileup in the first turn. Oh. He, and he was stuck in my front tire, and I couldn't move because he was knocked out on my front tire. 
And I'm like, and me being, I don't know if it's just like, I have a heart. Like I'm watching the guy like not move. And if I'm, if I move, like if what's going to happen to him, Yeah. you know, like right now he's stationary on my wheel and then something happened and he kind of rolled off and then I went, that's not my kind, doing. That's kind of creepy. Yeah. Yeah. So he, uh, I was dead last minus the people that were down and came back to podium. Came back to podium. Yeah. So you just, you guys that were struggling with that thing all year. I yeah, but that, that track was so slow. It didn't really matter. Hmm. Yeah, I thought that, that <laughs> you had a mud race. You're like, yes, the bike, <laughs> the bike will handle. Yeah. I think I podium in Anaheim three in the mud. Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> Daytona and a mud race. <laughs> um, so just, yeah, not much to talk about. No, go, oh, you, oh, you, you got like buds. You got a second. You still had some good rides. I won the first moto at buds. Did you? Yeah. So you were figuring it out. But I went, I went one six. I was smoked. Just vapored. <laughs> I did. I honestly lined up the second moto. I'm like, there's no way it's here already. Like that second moto came so fast and I was gassed before it even took off. It goes really fast when you're out of shape. Seems like that clock just. Zip, it's like I got I got changed. I'm getting dressed again. I'm like, no, <laughs> like. And you probably no. had to go to the podium, so that took time. Yes, and, and my that. arms were still shot. I couldn't honestly. My arms, when I started that moto, I'm like, I'm doing what I can to stay on the dirt bike. Like, there's no, let's charge to the front. Like, yeah. I started in the front. I'm gonna stay right where I'm at. No one's fast. No one's you know faster than me behind me, but everyone in front of me is going just a smidge. If I go that smidge more, like I'm, was, I'm, yeah. I'm not gonna be at the podium. So I might as well just stay where I'm at. Like yeah. I was, at, I was, I was smoked. Mm. The, the bike, myself, not caring. Yeah, it was a, it was, it was bad rough. Combo? Yeah, really bad combo. All right, let's go one more year and we'll take a break. 2010. Yep. Did you guys get it any better? Nope. And it was a two-year deal, so you were locked in. I was locked. But the difference was I knew it's all I had. I didn't go into it blind. You embraced the suck. I embraced, <laughs> I, I embraced the suck to where, yes, I mean, I would say it got like like 5% better. Right. But it was to the point to where. What was the deal? It was just stink bug. But it like, was stink bug. It was short. It was twitchy. It was a jackhammer. It, they didn't want to. I told this story just 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 last week. It literally, and I think a a big issue of it never changing was one Ray Conway, who was in charge at the time, um, but also Andrew Short. No no offense, Andrew, and he knows it. It's he was that yes man. Oh, you know it's like <laughs> to this day, to this day we. I mean, I talked to Hannah and and, and Mo and and you know Hannah Facetime Shorty of course when you know she's around me so she hands me the phone here look and I talk about this story because the only thing I talked to him about. Yeah. And it's Southwick. We flew in early and it had stormed. I mean stormed, and the track was miserable. The bike sucked, and it that wasn't bike at Southwick is like. So I wasn't happy as it was. Yeah. There was rain ruts everywhere. I'm like, dude, my bike is miserable. This is ruddy. Like, it's not even a good track. My, I'm not even, I don't even want to be here. Yeah. And he's like, dude, this place is gnarly. It's, it's not safe to ride. Like, we should tell them. I'm like, okay, yeah, well, they come over. And he's like, how is it? I'm like, dude, this, is, this place sucks. Like, my bike sucks. This is terrible. Like, let's just wait. What about you, Shorty? Oh, it's fucking awesome. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but that's just how it was with him yeah. you know and then you have you have shorty who's loving it and then you have ivan and i going against it so of course they're going to lean towards the positive one which is he was doing good on it he was he he had that mentality of this is my ride which is the mentality that we all should have had you know but we all wanted it better and he knows now i think that it could have been so much better mm -hmm. had he been on our side they would have maybe fixed it he was kind of a people pleaser yes didn't want to upset anybody no. and so. that's okay though you know it's, i get it he didn't have a ride like we did growing up it wasn't easy for him mm. you know and then and then it became he became obviously andrew short to where he was a top guy mm -hmm. and but yet he got there by you know just having that mindset of i'm gonna make it work yeah and that's <laughs> i get it but that bike was not gonna work there was no making that bike work but then in 11 and 12 i heard it got great well, or twelve, yeah, but I don't know. I was off of it. <laughs> I was, I was on a, I was on a technically worse bike. I feel like. So you, you actually did, you did pretty good on it, even though you hated it. Um, 
Won San Diego, lots of podiums. Um, looks like he had a big crash at Bud's. I lost my kidney. Yeah, broke so my back, broke my thumb, knocked myself out. What happened? Broke my ribs, hit false neutral. Oh. Hmm? Yeah, see, no one knows about most of my injuries. So you lost a kidney when uh -huh. you just hit it, just hit I, your back? I, no, I hit it. I hit where I landed. I hit so hard, I broke the kidney. And when I was <laughs> in the hospital, and they're like, well, you know, you have about, what was it, three hours or something like that but to try to stint it back together before the kidney dies. I'm like, okay, so let's get going. Like, I'm, I've, I've been here for like an hour. Let's go. Hour and a half goes by. Nothing. And then they pull me in. They put the stint in or the camera, whatever it is, through, like, through my groin, go around. I'm watching it on camera. He goes in, does something, pulls it out. I was like, ah, can't do it. But I, I feel like it had already died because they waited too long to where they didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. But so I lost my kidney. Um, and then they made me lay on the damn gurney for four hours flat after that with broken ribs, a broken back, broken thumb, punctured lung. Were you lung. on a plastic spine board? I was on a, well, I, had a, I think I had a little cushion, but it was flat. I could not move could not sit up because I guess the hole in my groin was so big and it was in my main, one of my main arteries yeah. and that was miserable. But yeah, that was uh butt mm -hmm. creek for you. And what, what part of your back to break? Uh, my L4, L5. Just the spinous process or was it actually part of the vertebrae? Both, mm -hmm. but the vertebrae wasn't bad, but regardless, it wasn't bad. You know, still, it's still, a fracture. it's still a fracture. Knocked out there or no? Yes. That was my second one. Oh, that was the second one. That was the second okay. one. But I wasn't knocked out for long. But I don't remember most of... Was it a... I mean, you obviously hit hard. So it yeah, like, it was... It was. So the people on the stands that saw me like the next year, they came up to me and said, I'm glad to see you here because we thought you died. Like, you hit that hard, we thought you died. Um, like, so, like a... Yeah. Hmm. So, I mean, that's before they filled in the goalie before the finish line. It used to be like a big goalie. Yeah. It clicked false news off the face and I didn't, I didn't make the landing i landed on the flat oh so gosh. i fell what 35 40 feet to nothing maybe maybe yeah. a little bit further depends on back then i don't know just you landed long. on your back i don't know oh i land i think i landed on my side is it on tv or if i can go find it on uh YouTube? they didn't show me yeah. i was i think i was sixth okay. too far back <laughs> yeah <if laughs> too you're far, six they yeah, don't care Get yeah too far here. back loser um okay Let's take a quick break, and we'll come back here at uh, 2011. You made another change, left Honda for JGR. <laughs> yep. And I'm curious to hear about that. I got questions. <laughs> this is your Troy Lee Designs timeout. Stick around. We're going to be back here with Davey Millsaps in a, in a quick second. There's a new product on the market that's going to help you with your riding and racing, and it's Elevate Action Sports. If you've not yet gone and checked it out at elevateactionsports.com, it's a collective of riding coaches, the likes of which has never been put together. Grant Langston, Ryan Hughes, Jeff Emick, Johnny Campbell, and myself, David Pingree, bringing all of our years of experience in professional racing to one place with professionally produced videos and all kinds of supporting staff to help you with your mental side of racing, your physical side, your bike setup, your bike maintenance. We cover it all. Get to Elevate Action Sports right now and join the community. There's a reason every AMA championship in the past decade was won on Dunlop tires. They are the best. Choose the best performing tire and a brand that has never wavered in their support of our sport. Choose Dunlop. Pro Circuit. Pro Circuit products are designed with one goal in mind, winning. Through passion and hard work, Pro Circuit has operated the most successful 250 team in the history of the sport. They use that same formula when developing exhaust, engine, and suspension parts for every brand. When only the highest level of performance is acceptable, trust Pro Circuit. Since 2009, Seat Concepts has been dedicated to making the best aftermarket seats. More comfort, more grip, more riding. For 10 years, we've continued to raise the bar. Innovation and American craftsmanship make Seat Concepts the world leading manufacturer of power sports seats. Hey. 
something from nothing. That's what Nihilo Concepts is about. It starts with a spark, an idea, a concept, which leads to a design and finishes with engineered excellence with the highest quality products created with durability in mind. All our products are made in the USA at our state-of-the-art facility in Stewart, Florida. Whether you are a weekend warrior, ride for fun, or at the highest level of competition, Nihilo Concepts offers innovative titanium, aluminum, and carbon fiber parts for your dirt bike. We offer a wide variety of products that you can customize to your liking. Browse our site for foot pegs, brake tips, engine components, specialty tools, frame grip tape, lever grips, carbon fiber components, motor stands, our secondary on-switch, plus much more. Head to NihiloConcepts.com and see for yourself why factory teams like Red Bull KTM, Rockstar Husqvarna, Troy Lee Designs Gas Gas, Orange Brigade, Club MX, KLM Gas Gas, and some of the fastest riders in the world choose Nihilo Concepts. Specialized Bicycles. Specialized leads the way in the world of bicycling. Whether it's cross-country racing, downhill, e-bikes, enduro, road, gravel, dual slalom, dirt jumping, or all mountain bikes that do it all, Specialized has the perfect ride for you. The brand is synonymous with engineering excellence and innovation that steers the industry. Visit your local Specialized dealer for a test ride and see just how good Specialized products are. With a rich history in motocross, ProX has been dedicated to supplying quality components since 1975. Whether you're rebuilding an engine or just need a new chain, ProX Racing Parts aims to bridge the gap between OE quality and affordability. ProX has over 9,000 part numbers and over 60 different product types that are manufactured by highly reputable or even OEM suppliers and are offered at affordable prices to help keep riders on the bike instead of in the garage. Visit ProX.com to search parts for your bike or check them out at your favorite online or local dealer. A lot of us have been talking about the stasic generation of riders and you forget how quickly things can change in a sport that is as young as motocross. That's six, seven years that these bikes have been around training riders. So we have a stasic generation out on the racetrack. A lot of those riders surely were raised on stasics and the skills they show are next level. All the things that coaches have been teaching riders on larger motorcycles for decades, they're doing it younger than ever. And it's hard to believe the stasic generation is already here. Welcome back, everybody. That was your Troy Lee Designs timeout. If you guys are in the market for gear, for a new helmet, for paint, uh, whatever you need, go to TroyLeeDesigns.com. Check those guys out. All new line of gear out, mountain bike gear. They're doing helmet painting and lettering. Uh, great stuff over there at those uh, TLD. So appreciate their support. And I want to welcome a new partner here to the show. Uh, it's Ketone IQ. It's something that I discovered kind of recently. If you haven't seen this product, you're probably going to... Uh, soon. It's a supplement that increases your blood ketones. I'm not on the, a ketogenic diet. Uh, I think there's not a ton of people that are, um, but it improves focus and energy levels for longer periods of time, especially when you've been fasting. Like when I get up in the morning, go work out or go to the gym or get on a bike, I don't usually have a big breakfast prior to. So your energy stores are kind of depleted. This is a way to really just dial that in. Uh, it, and it's really the body's preferred energy source, ketones. And so it was developed uh, by this company, HVMN, who got a multi-million dollar government contract to develop something for our military to help those guys out in the field uh, kind of stay locked in and tuned in. And, uh, you know, personally, I've used this when I'm riding. I've used it at the gym. I've used it even when I'm prepping for shows and I got to be sitting at the computer. Just It just helps you to stay focused and kind of locked into what you're doing. And uh, I've tried it with my girls. They both play pretty high level soccer and just to make sure I'm not having some type of placebo effect. I was talking to Davey about it and uh, they both play better on it. Um, and even they admit it and it, it doesn't taste good. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> it kind of tastes like uh, gasoline a little bit. Um, it's not great, but it works. And like I said, I was trying to go, man, I, I want to ask some other people and I asked Davey about it. He goes, oh yeah, no, I use them. And, and Benny uses them. And um, there's a lot of people using this product now. 
Yeah, I mean, I started, Benny sent that to me a couple of years ago. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 like, no, I'm not into it. And then randomly it popped up, you know, just before this year started and I ordered it. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try it. And I bought a ton of it, <clears throat> started drinking it. I hate running with a passion. And I started drinking it from a run, like maybe it'll help. And I could run and it wouldn't bother me just because I was just more so focused on my run versus being bored <laughs> yeah. out of my mind. And then I started giving it to my guys. And Benny's like, I showed you this forever ago. I'm like, I don't care. Take it now. <laughs> yeah. Well, it works. Yeah. And I was really stoked to hear that from you because yeah. I'm, I reached out to Chad Reed. He's yeah. on it. He's got his kids on it. I'm, I just would like to do my research and kind of make sure it's a, it's a quality product before we really commit with a, with a brand. And You got so, good stuff right there. It's great stuff. Yeah. I'm really piped. And so check this out. If you guys want to try it, you can go to hvmn.com forward slash WTM, Whiskey Throttle Media, and get 30% off your first order. So if you're buying them, I'll get you 30% I, off. Right I, I, I buy them, man. <laughs> I buy them. Um, the discounts apply to checkout, so check them out. I'm, I'm stoked on it. We're, this is going to be a regular part of my program. I mean, even days you just got work to do or just whatever, it helped. To me, the biggest thing is the mental lock-in. You just kind of get uh, focused. 4.30 this morning when I took it for my drive. That's all that right? I need. Yeah. Well, I'm stoked to have them on board. So um, give them a try, you guys. It's it's really good stuff. HVMN.com forward slash whiskey throttle uh, forward slash WTM. Thirty uh, percent off. All right, let's get back to your story here, buddy. Um, <laughs> sorry, we had, a, more, had a, more more of had no to welcome story. in the new the yeah. new partner there. But yeah. uh, 2011 were did you have an offer to stay at Honda or was it kind of the time time had run its course there? It was mutual. Okay, because. Ray Conway, who was there, wasn't a fan of me not liking it. It was his way or the highway. Right. And I just obviously fought it for two years. Two years had been enough of fighting. And he, he had to be hearing it from more. I mean, I remember from the media side, we were, we were kind of like trying to be nice, but going, yeah, it's got some character issues. Yeah. His yeah. wife's brownies were amazing, but the ability to run the team the way he did was not amazing. Oh, I thought you were going to tell you like, Special brownies. No, like if we podiumed or, you know, if, if a Honda guy podiumed, she brought brownies and oh my God, they were so they good. Were bomb. God, they were so good. Probably a big reason why I got fat. Oh. But, <laughs> but again, that was, God, that was two years of misery. I think when Chuck Miller left is when it kind of went downhill for a little while. Okay. Yeah. Well, for whatever, whatever reason, that, uh, that model was, it was a struggle bus. <laughs> yeah. So, so take me over. How how did you get with JGR? Did you have? Uh, were you hesitant to go there at all? At that point, Yamaha was, had just come out with the new reverse engine thing, right? Mm -hmm. Well, oh nine, right? S same kind of window, and it, it was again mixed or reviews 10, yeah. with handling, right? So I, I think I would have been if I was in your shoes, maybe going, man, am I trading one? ill handling bike for another oh i was definitely nervous yeah very nervous but it was my only option mm. you know i didn't really i didn't wasn't looking really anywhere else jjr was close to home mm. so to say you know i was in california at the time but it's on the east coast so i was pumped to be did you move so i you had a, i moved i moved there they made everyone go to charlotte mm -hmm. or wherever uh, mooresville or Mooresville. yeah and went there um i started riding again five months or four months after I lost my kidney, okay. started riding again. Got on the bike for the first time. I'm like, damn it, not good. Not good. Oh no, I, I was, I was so bummed. Really? I was so I was expecting something, at least, at least better. But you know how they say the grass is always greener. That one wasn't, like nowhere near. Mm. It, it, the grass, the grass didn't exist. That bike wasn't good mm. uh, for that window of time. No, and it was it was miserable. But I was also out of shape, way worse than I think any point in my career. Mm. Um, they had me lifting really heavy weights, so I couldn't move. I was getting arm pump in two laps. So that was the thing about this team, especially early on. Yeah. I think they got a little more flexible. But as soon as like, when James came, they got flexible. Okay. Yeah. They were like, you have to live here. You have to do our program. Mm -hmm. And it was like a football. It was a football trainer. Yeah. And he was an awesome guy. Yeah. He was straight up. He was an awesome guy, but just not, not for dirt bikes. Hmm. I got so giant. I weighed 225 pounds. What? And oh, literally I was a I was a beast of a human. It wasn't it wasn't fun to ride a dirt bike. 
And then halfway through the season, I am struggling to make to get eighth and seventh. And okay. I run into my just a friend, you know, just just an old, old, old friend who was a trainer. And I'm like, can you help me? <laughs> like, please. I will literally at this time I had I knew nothing about training. I knew nothing about still nothing about diets. And I'm like, can you help me? And he was like, yes. So he started sending me a program to do. Um, and I started doing it. And then on the weekend off, I flew to him. And I literally did everything I had to do right then and there at his house. Flew home. And I went and sat down with the trainer. And I said, look, this is what I'm going to do. You're either going to be on board with me or you're not. But if you're not, I'm more than likely you know, I'm going to get fired because this, you know, I have to do your program. And he's like, I'm in, let's do it. So it was super high, nice, super, cool. super cool. And, and he, and he didn't have a motocross background. Right? No. He was a football guy. Yes. Okay. And I started coming back around towards the end of the season. I got <clears throat> started getting better, started getting in better shape, had a decent, um, outdoor season. I would say nothing to great. Um, yeah, I mean, I saw some podiums here. Um, I think hang down super cross, you know, you had like a, some fourth fifths. Yeah. Uh, you know, for you, not yeah. lighting the world on fire, but I don't think I ever podiumed an, an eleven. Not uh, in Supercross, yeah. But second at Freestone, yeah. <laughs> Only because I jumped the wall. That's about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Not 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 a great season, like yeah. I said. Just just dude, I was. It was a struggle bus. That bike was a struggle bus. Everything was a struggle bus, and then it uh, seemed like. The only people that could make that bike work, though, were bigger guys like yeah. you, you and Weston, and yeah. um, there was someone else that was big that rode it really well. Oh, and and we had the pearly tires that year too, so that was a different different mm -hmm. issue for me. Um, but yeah, the big guys who make it work, yeah. but those are still a struggle for the teams that are using them. In and Supercross. they and they asked me to be a test guy for them, and I would love to be. You know, it, it, I would love to help them develop something really good, but it's just their. I feel like their motto is race what we sell. And in a Supercross race, that's never going to happen. Mm -mm. You're never going to be a Dunlop or a Bridgestone when it comes to that. If you don't have a race tire, you don't. You, if you don't have a race tire that that, that people can use, they can't so. sell those race tires because they people would wear them out in a day. <laughs> yeah. and be pissed. Yeah. So, but if you want those guys, you know, if you want a really high performing tire, it's a completely different. It's un, I mean, I get it. It would be cool if we can race, you know, OEM tires, but it's not. Not at that level. Not that level. It's not gonna happen yet. So then, after the season, they were talking about hiring James. Obviously, James was coming over, and that took till November, halfway through November, to get like locked in. But he was still riding the bike the whole time. Okay. He was still riding. I didn't have a bike. I didn't. I only had a one year deal. Oh. So I didn't have a bike. I didn't have anything. Um. So I went to New York to live with the trainer, and I went from two hundred and twenty five or twenty eight pounds, you know and uh, just muscle you weren't fat I, I mean i wasn't i was kind of both okay and to to a hundred and 180 pounds i think that's what i ended there 40 pounds a lot dude i i ended there at 180 pounds when i left and showed up at jgr to sign a contract at the beginning of november and i had not ridden in two months mm. so i'm lean everyone looked at me like you got Fuck are you? <laughs> and I'm like, let's go. And I didn't get the same bike James did. I didn't get the really? same. Nah. Um, I didn't get the same stuff he got. And his bike was way better than mine. But I still was doing. I'm like, you know what? This is my. I have a one year deal. I don't care. You know. Got to make the best of it. Make the best of it. Well, like, what was he getting? That you weren't suspensions. Uh, like? Suspension was somewhat similar, but he can get. He can do what he wanted. But the chassis itself, as far the gas tank. Everything he, else being super, it, right? oh my God, he narrowed it to where it made your world oh, yeah. way better. Um, that bike was like riding a, a, a lawnmower. Yeah. It was very wide. Yeah. So he got it super, super skinny and they wouldn't give it to me. Why? It's crazy. too expensive, they said. So again, when I was, I started a podium and James wasn't, he left the team and or, or I was beating James, whatever it was. He left the team. I got his stuff, and then I started podium. Or something around, something like that. But as soon as I got his stuff, I started making the podium. And I had like five that year, I think. Okay. Uh, yeah, the first part of the season was a yeah. little off, but then you went two, three, four, two, 
two, two. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. start reeling them off. Yeah. But I finally got his bike. I got his stuff and the bike was night and day. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was actually pumped to ride that bike. Mm. It was fast. What yes. was that motor? It was fast. It handled good. I was I was starting to enjoy being because I could make it work. Yeah. You know, I didn't like the tires, but I could make it work. Yeah. And I'm not trying to no disrespect to Pirelli at all. Like I just the way that I rode and the way that I was in the front end, I just couldn't ride their their front. Their yeah. rear, I it's didn't care about. Front. It's, it's always the front. It's always the front. Yeah. Um and, and same with Dunlop. I struggle with some of their tires as well. I mean, let's face it. But it was that mindset of this is all I got. Mm-hmm. You know, this is, this is my ride. I'm going to make it work. So I did. I got second in the points that year. Um, and, it, and who, who won in 12? Dungy? No, Poto. Oh, it was Arby. Okay. Yeah. Um, he won in, in, uh, in Houston. He wrapped okay. it up in Houston. Okay. Um, I, uh, talked to Bobby Hewitt at the banquet when we had him and, you know, I said, I hear you're going to have a 450 team. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, I want on. You know, I, Were, was JGR talking about keeping you? I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But I'm like, I want so on. So why, why? Did you want to go back to the Suzuki? Did you just. I needed well, a change. Yeah. It was, I know it's only two years, but I, I needed, how I was treated with getting different stuff and how they were with someone. Yeah. It was one of those. And then they only offered me another year and a half. Like they, to finish that year and then one more year, I'm like, I'm like, no, I don't want that. Like, give me a two-year deal. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, I've given you your best results you've had in Supercross, except for a win, obviously, but I got you second in points, the cheapest second in points that they'd ever gotten. Sure. <laughs> you yeah. know? Because they didn't pay me but but dimes that year. Really? Um, and, you know, I don't care what Mathis says. They didn't pay me anything. Mm-hmm. And James got the whole budget. Mm-hmm. So, and, and so be Which, it. You, yeah, I mean, you had to pay James a ton to get him. Yeah. Like, that's probably all they had. And great, to, you know. But at least give me the same parts. Yeah, you know, and yeah, that's <laughs> that's lame. But yeah. you know, when when they were talking about hiring me or bring me back, I had RCH and I had you know, and then I was talking to Bobby, and Bobby's like, "Well, are you going to be able to back up what you just did?" I'm like, "I can," and he's like, "Oh, I don't think so." I'm like, "I can. Trust me, I can. Give me your bike because I already know Scuba. I've been around Scuba since before Scuba." was ever in, you know, in the industry. He was down at my house at the before, you know, before MTF and stuff like that. Yeah. And I'm like, I've known you my whole career. Like, give me a chance. He's like, I'll think about it. And I get a phone call, you know, that next week while I'm testing outdoors. And he's like, let's work a deal. So worked a deal, told RCH no, told JGR obviously no. And what was your, between RCH and- JGR. And JG, or uh, no, uh, Suzuki, Rockstar Suzuki. Why them and not RCA? It wasn't factory. Mm. I didn't want to be factory. I didn't want to deal with the factory. Yamaha was, JGR was their factory team. Um, Honda was factory. I didn't want to deal with the factory anymore. Mm. I wanted, when Pat Alexander called me and said, well, you're not going to get any of our help if you go over there. It's, we're not, you know, they're not factory. You're not going to get anything from us. And I'm like, great. Perfect. Like, perfect. I can do mm. what I want. Yeah, I and mean, explain that to people because, no. you know, in some cases, whether it's ignitions or it's transmissions or it's certain parts, that factory help is good. Yeah. But, but but there's some downsides to it. You're you're locked into what they want, and sometimes it's like, no, you have to use this. Yeah. Period. Yeah. If you wanted to try KYB and they're a show, they're like, no, Just yeah. no. It, it's it's their way or the highway. Yeah. You know, and, and unless you have someone on board a factory team that is open minded and doesn't have an ego, which is very hard to find. Pretty rare. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I think Honda is quite there now with whatever it takes they're gonna do. Um, you know, I think KTM is, is catching up fast. Star has been that and way. And Star has been like. that way. But Bobby Reagan's always been I we I wanna win. I wanna win. Yeah. Whatever it takes. I, whatever's gonna make them win, go. You know, but that's been Bobby since day one. Yeah. And so it's like these teams are starting to finally catch on. But to have a team, a privateer satellite team, willing to do whatever it takes, you know what I mean? Whatever parts I need, that, that makes a difference. Did you know Jamie Ellis real well and what he was capable of? I knew of Jamie okay. a long time um, because he was at MTF before. Oh, was he? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's... Yeah, I don't know if people realize how good that guy is. With him and I struggled. 
We butted heads a lot that oh, year. Did you? Oh, heavy. Mm-hmm. And he'll tell you straight up, like, we butted heads. Mm-hmm. And when my bike blew up at Anaheim 2 down the starting straight, um, I was in the heat race and it blew up. I was had the whole shot. And then it blew up before I got to the first turn. And, dude, it, it locked up hard. And everyone smacked me from the back. My bike flipped right into him. It hit him. It hit Jamie? <laughs> it hit Jamie. Well, that's and, poetic justice. <laughs> and I was like, well, it, that's instant karma for you. Um, I didn't know that until you know later that night. But that, that crash hurt. I mean, really, really, really bad. But like him and I, when, when we talk, we still talk all the time. And we'll joke about stuff like that. You know, like we, we got rid of our differences that we had. We both had egos that year, so to say, or whatever it, may, whatever it was. But now, you know, now we're fine. He's great. He's, 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 he's good great. at what he does. He's, very he's good great. at what he does, hands down. Um, I sent one of my riders, uh, Cameron Harrison. He's an amateur kid from Texas. I sent his dad there to get all his motors done. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I, anyone that calls me and asks, I send him to Twisted for sure. But, but yeah, no, it, for me, it was literally just being able to have whatever suspension with, you know, show a Scott, we could test whatever we wanted, whatever. I tried out different, you know, a bunch of different clamps that they could get their hands on. Um, but we ran the applied ones. Um, they weren't the greatest, but I didn't really have many choices. Um, and whatever wheels I wanted and, and so on and so forth. Like I could build the bike the way I wanted, which was uh, n- unlike anything I've been able to do in years. Mm. So that's why I went that way. And then were you staying with that same trainer up in, was it New York, you said? Where was that trainer? Uh, so, yeah, New York was, actually 2012 was the last year I used him. Okay. 13, I went with I went a different route with, with Yogi, and, and mm-hmm. I hired um, Pete Colson, and he's out of San Diego. I hired him for the year. Um, at the end of the day, he, they, they were both great trainers. They really are, and... I butted heads with, with both of them. <laughs> and it just was easier for me after that to just be like, you know what? Like, Yogi, take control. Like, you take it. Because I can deal with you. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I can be with you. I can talk to you. I can I can butt heads with you. You know, we're, we're both Southern boys. Like, you understand where I'm coming from. You've been in my shoes. No one else around me really has. Um, but then I took him for granted as well. So that was a big mistake on my part. Mm-hmm. Um but as far as my trainers, no, hands down, like, you know, Pablo was with the kid from New York, the guy from New York. You know, he went with, with Stuart for a while. Hmm. And then I had Pete. And I still talk to both of them to this day. Hmm. Um, you know, Pete helps me out a lot. And Pablo's always been a good friend of mine. And he helps me whenever I need help. But if I ever have a question or ever need anything, like, I have, you know, people that I can rely on, you know, like those guys still. Because I called to apologize to them when I started training guys. I'm like... I get it now. <laughs> I'm really I was a, sorry. I was an asshole. Like I'm sorry, and and they both, you know, they. Have, I even called Ezra, and I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry. Like these guys, I don't know, or not the guys I'm with now, but I'm like, I don't know if they're worse than me. But if I, if they are, or if they're, if I was worse, <laughs> like I'm sorry. Like honestly, truly, from the bottom of my heart, like I'm sorry because it, it's a, it's a lot of work and yeah. people don't realize that people don't realize how much work that you have to put in that you have to invest into these kids um especially with my commute for 16 hours a week really yeah and with the you know the on the bike the off the bike the mental side of things it's it's so much so like when i have all these guys around me when i hired pete for 13 you know it, it was more of a what do I got to do? Whatever it takes, you know, let's just, let's just move forward. But then once I started going, it got to the, where I would complain about everything training because training, I was doing all my riding program. Yogi, what I, I got you, you know, Yogi was like, he so said, Yogi was doing your riding. Yes. Stuff and, then, and, okay. and Yogi sent me three motos to do one day. And I'm like, but I hadn't missed a moto the day before. I'm like, I'm like, fuck you, Yogi. I'll do four. He goes, no, you won't. And I'm like, Oh yes, I will. Like, I'll do four. You watch. And he's like, no, nah, you're too much of a baby. So, <laughs> <laughs> he used different words, but, um, but I ended up doing four motos that day. And I did it out of spite to prove him wrong. Mm-hmm. But it, it, it was so enjoyable being able to do that. I loved riding the dirt bike that year. That's all I cared about doing. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, Pete, that I hated cycling so much with you. I, I hated it. I mean, he took me on loops. I literally wanted to throw a bike I, at him. And he's literally, I mean, he's... It's hard to make that fun. 
he's way smaller than me, so it wouldn't have been hard to hit him. Like, <laughs> it's blowing into the weeds. I wanted to hit him so bad, yeah. you know. But and he even called Yogi while I was on the ride because I was complaining so much. I was just I was being a little bitch. I I really truly was, and and that's just the honest truth. So now, you know, looking back, I'm it's like, damn, you know, like if I would have done just both of those the same mindset not just one yeah. um but that's that to me was a big learning curve in, in 13 was knowing that i put everything i had into writing but not really the other stuff so i was in shape i was in writing you know shape but i didn't have the endurance to be able to maybe sprint for that 20 laps at the time you know i i made it happen for most of 13 that's why that's why Salt Lake was probably, like I said, probably one of the one of the best races that I, of my entire life. Mm. So, I mean, I feel like this was one of your best seasons. Oh, hands yeah. down. Okay. Yeah, hands down. I just, I just want to make sure I wasn't. But I was still, I was still complaining a lot that whole year. <laughs> you were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, so take us in. I mean, preseason obviously went well. Very well. Uh, that opener, man. I remember watching that battle there at the end and just like I was on my feet like yeah. I think the whole stadium was yeah. it was a great race man and I yeah. and I mean I got goosebumps I, thinking about it it's, yeah, it's no, cool I remember hearing oh yeah Millsaps is riding really good yeah. but like you know you came out and freaking lit it up dude. like <laughs> it was really impressive the only one that had my back was TP really yeah, he's the one that called it he's the only one that called it he's the only one that threw my name in the hat I what? think it's because I was a Suzuki boy back I was back to Suzuki that's mm -hmm. why he called it but I mean he's obviously been one of my good friends since I was eight Had years old. Have you seen you riding or what? No, oh, okay. no, no. He, I love the fact that TP has always had faith in me. You know, when we always rode together every year, Yeah, he come to my house every year we ride together. Yeah. And it got to the point to where, you know, my goal in, <laughs> my main goal growing up was to beat him in the whoops. That was a main goal for me. Good luck. And I did plenty of times. Well, and you two are maybe <laughs> as good as it got in the whoops. And then another goal for me was to beat him in a wheelie. Because that fool could wheelie anywhere, anytime, on anything. Yeah. And at my house, I challenged him to a wheelie contest, and I beat him. And he actually fell. And it literally, like my, I was like winning it. That was a winning championship for me. Was beating <laughs> TP because you know you growing up, he wheelies everything. It was God. It's it's well the only thing I want ever to do. Was beat him in the whoops, and beat him in a wheelie. So he had my back. And I think to this day, he probably still would. Who was your mechanic that year? Car uh, oh, sorry, Scuba. Oh, Scuba was. Okay. Yeah. And you, you knew him from before? Oh, so I've known Scuba from, probably 15 years before that. And was like, what did the Suzuki guys, Pat Alexander? I mean, They sent me a letter saying congratulations. Oh, just a letter? Yep. A letter in the mail. Congratulations. <laughs> 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 I mean, that's what I got. And they gave me a flywheel that year. Oh yeah, a, a stock flywheel. I guess something something had in my flywheel, and I needed a different one, and they had one, so they gave it to me. But that was it. Jeez, that's all I got. All right, um, no. not even a high five, man. <laughs> and so you you held the red plate for most of twelve the, rounds. Twelve rounds, yeah. okay. And RV was having his struggles, kind of got going on a roll at the end. Yeah. You twisted your knee. I yeah I I that's when I had to have my femur rebroken and. I hit my knee so hard it twisted to where it was already pretty twisted to begin with that when the bones hit that time, it did the bones in and, and then broke both ends of the bones off um, of the tibia and the femur to where it was all floating around on my knee. Oh my so it was getting lodged everywhere and in between my joints. So to be able to bend it or straighten it one time, like it would be like someone stabbed me or I couldn't, couldn't straighten it because the piece would get lodged. Yeah. Um, so I had to race Daytona like that and I had to race the rest of the rounds like that. And what did you do? Did you I just, I, I didn't, it was painful. Were you a knee brace guy? You always wear knee braces? Yeah. 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 It just literally, it did not matter. My bone, they were so close because of how crooked my knee was that when they hit, they hit just right. And, and probably oh. for the 40th time that, cause I've had 12 knee surgeries on this one because to remove all the junk out of it. Bone spurs. Yeah. Bone. And, and just fragments floating around. This one just made the fragments really big. Mm -hmm. And when they would get lodged in there, dude, it, my, it was miserable to ride. But then towards the end of the season, like I think they got lodged in somewhere 
to where I could, I, it was, it was okay. still painful, but I could actually, I could bend my knee. I can straighten it to where it wasn't getting stuck anymore. Yeah, I was going to so, say, I don't know how you're riding like that. I mean, yeah. I, I have knee issues and yeah. like when it locks, cause I've got some yeah. stuff floating yeah. around right now. When it, when it gets into the joint, yeah. I mean, it almost buckles you. Yeah. So I had, but then I think I got lodged so far in somewhere <laughs> that I was, I was, I was, I was able to start bending it. And that's where towards the end of the season, I started to come back on the podium a little bit more and be more consistent up to the front. Well, and, and you, if you look through your results this year, one, three, four, two, two, one, two, three, six, ten 10 at Daytona. I yeah, was going to ask you about that. was that. a bad one. What happened? Just That was the first weekend, three days before or after I hurt my knee. Oh, gotcha. And Eli t- <laughs> took me out in the second corner, not meaning to. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought I did worse than 10th, but 10th I'll take. Um, anyway, it was yeah. like that's that's championship 12 podiums. numbers. 12 podiums. Yeah. yeah. Um, the 10th the tenth, and Indianapolis did me in. Unfortunately, you were up against RV, which he was a beast, you know. I, and again, and I got to end three, three, two, three to end yeah. the season. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. The the Salt Lake second was, like I said, probably the best race of the year for so me. So tell me about that race. Take take me through that one. For I mean, obviously, Anaheim one was great. San Diego was great. That was the first race in my entire career I led from start to finish and never got past my only time in my entire career. I think. Um, really? Yeah. Cause I always came from the, from the back or like Anaheim one where they passed me and I passed back or if I still got passed, okay. um, salt Lake RV started up front. I was probably eighth or ninth off the gate. Um, and the first lap I passed into third and the whoops. Um, and it's still to this, like to this day is pretty cool. Cause I split Brayton and, Kennard, I they were side by side and I split them, went past them both, mm. and then went into third behind Dungey. And the next lap I passed Dungey in the whoops. So then R V, myself, and Ryan. So now we're, you know, we have eighteen laps left realistically. And for eighteen laps we stayed within a second. The entire race. Mm. Every single one of us. <clears throat> and I mean I was pretty delusional at that point. I was in altitude. I was feeling it heavy. I mean, I was trying to convince myself or talk to myself like, Hey, like in the air, like, okay, this is, this is what's coming up. Like I had to start thinking ahead because it was, my brain wasn't there with altitude. I was, I was losing it with oxygen and need some ketone. IQ <laughs> up in there. So did you do that a lot when you race kind of, uh, the only monologue only, only that time. Cause I had to, cause I, I was, I was getting lost. I was literally getting so delusional from my heart rate being so high for so long, literally, Ryan, myself, and, and Ryan were within one second for 18 laps. And it was just, if someone made a mistake, like they were going to get passed. Like it was that easy. So not one of us made one. It was one of the coolest races. I know afterwards, <laughs> I know this, you know, where, where I think Dungy said, you know, if, if Davey was able to beat me there, then I'm not in shape. <laughs> oh, really? But that's the that's the you know reputation that I had. So and fair enough. Like I mean, I give it to him. And when I talked to him at Redbud last year, I was like, dude, like those are really the only year I really ever trained. And he's like, what? I'm like, I was lazy. Like let's be honest, I just rode. But when after after Salt Lake, when Yogi was there, you know, he's like, I know you didn't win the championship. I know you didn't win the race. But he's like, that was the most badass best race I've ever seen you do. Mm. Just the fact of just the truth, like the, the grit that all three yeah. of us had. And to this day, I put that on the books. as probably one. I know I got second, but it was probably one of the best races of my entire life. So well, it's pretty cool to go just toe to toe for that yeah. many laps yeah. with those two guys. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And I know they won all the, obviously all the championships and granted, should I have won championships? hundred percent. Like, you talk to anyone, I guarantee you, anyone that I raced against would tell you that if I ever put effort in like they did. But I think they all, you know, I had the reputation of, of not. Well, you didn't want to let them down. Yeah, I did. I just, I wanted, I wanted to, you know, I didn't want to hurt their feelings, you know. Um, did you do Supercross only that year? Yeah, because I had surgery on my, on my femur. Got your knee yep. that's right. Okay. I, I, I couldn't go anymore. And then tell me what happened to your foot in 14. You missed the whole year. God, I had... So how did that one happen? I can't remember. I tore my ACL in December. 
And I tore my ACL. Same leg that, of the knee that was Nope. Up. My oh, good leg. Oh. I didn't wear a knee brace on that one. I wore a knee pad. I wore one brace and, and one pad for some odd reason most of my career. Um, I went to the KTM, and the team went to the KTM. And I was riding at Paula. How was that switch? Were you happy with that? No. no. That Suzuki was good. Yeah. 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 And you know what? Like the KT, they were really trying. They were trying to make it better. They knew it wasn't the greatest and it wasn't fitting my riding style, but they kept trying different things and it, it was getting better. It was really getting better. Were you getting factory engines and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on, I mean, I was. BTO was a, yeah. What? They got, they got motors, right? Yeah, yeah, BTO got motors and suspension. But, um, but no, I was on a good bike. Yeah. And it was, they were testing things with us to try to get them better because I, I wasn't liking it. And obviously Carlos being there was a big help, mm -hmm. but it was, you know, had nothing to do with my bike. The reason why I crashed, I, was, I landed and, and again, my hand fell off. Why? I don't know, but it fell off and tucked the front and my knee went. Mm -hmm. um, was it a big crash or just no? I mean, it wasn't one that I thought my knee was going to, it was one that you'd normally just get up from. Yeah. But when the bike, tw bike flipped sideways, my knee was still attached to it and, and it ripped it apart. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had the second most races in a row at that time. So I only needed five more races to be, Oh really? Yeah. Who had it? Chad. So I only needed five more rounds and I'm like, oh, back then I didn't care about the record. Like I've it's, now it's like, you know, it'd been cool, but now that Eli's in the lead, you know, yeah. I, I don't even, well, him. he ended last year. So, but he passed us by quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I'm 111 races in a row. Um, wow. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna go have surgery right now and just so I can come back to race. I, if I go race Anaheim, I race the first five, race the first six, it's just to get the record. And then I have to have surgery. Then I missed in the season anyway. So I might as well get it so I can come back. And I went and had surgery, came back, was messing around, dislocated my ankle and broke my foot on the track. Riding. Supercross or moto? Uh, I was riding motocross at the time. Okay. And just did a stupid jump, landed with my foot sideways on the peg, dislocated my ankle and broke my foot. Didn't know my ankle was dislocated, but I knew my foot was broken. Okay. Um, went in, got it fixed. Wasn't healing. Wasn't healing. I couldn't, went to go ride, couldn't ride. It was so painful. Went back in and they're like, oh, well maybe it's the screw. I'm like, okay. So they took the screw out. Of my of my foot, there's only one screw, and <clears throat> I waited four more weeks or six more weeks, whatever it was. Went back out to ride, so painful. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, what is going on? So I called a foot doctor in Florida, and John, and <clears throat> I was like, dude, what is going on? And he's like, come down here, let's see it, let's open it up. Opened it up, and I guess my he said, well, my nerves were so smashed and and destroyed from whatever I had done. So he cut the nerves in my foot. So I can't feel half my foot. Oh really? Uh uh. And then <clears throat> the side, whole side. The whole side to the top. That's yeah, just a weird, weird, weird feeling. And I'm like, okay, so I waited four weeks for that and came back to riding. And was I'm like, yeah, dude, like, yeah, we're good. I rode for a couple of days. I'm like, dude, it doesn't hurt. Went to ride one day. Ian actually showed up to do mapping. And H E showed up to do mapping and I went out and did a couple laps on the new map that he gave me and I landed on a jump and I'm like, fuck. I'm like, that's it. Like, that's it. Again. Came back in, I'm like, I can't ride. Broke it again? I don't know. Oh. And I'm like, dude, what is going on? Like this can't keep coming. Like, what is going on? So then after all this time, I have already not find it. I had x rays, I had I had C T scans, I had MRIs, nothing showed. And for some reason, nothing was showing. So he, I went down to Florida again. He opened me back up. And when he opened me up, he actually this time, I don't know why he didn't do it the first time, but he examined my entire bone, like everything, because it was actually like bone pain. He was examining my bone and realized that no one was seeing it because of all the stuff that was around it. And 50% or 40% of my bone wasn't healed, had never healed. So it was just there. Which bone on your uh, my tibia? fifth metatarsal? No, on oh, my foot. On your foot. Just just the freaking stupid pinky bone, and wasn't healed. 
So it was just stagnant. So every pain that I was feeling was the bone flexing and basically breaking again. And <clears throat> so they put nine screws and a plate in there. And I came back four weeks later and I haven't had pain since. Even still, is the plate in? Yes, the plate's still there. I mean, I can still, I still feel it like when I hit it because it's still like that weird, numb, yeah, yeah. annoying feel. Um, but yeah, so that was, so my ACL, my ankle, and my foot drug out all year. Like literally, oh. I was trying so hard to get back and just like, I got, I think I hurt my knee because um, I think I'm going to go back. I think I, I think I skipped forward too fast. I hurt my foot before my knee. Oh, okay. That's what started the first time. The first time. Yeah. And then my foot was still hurting me because I was riding with it, you know, and I'm like, you know, I'm just going to ride through the pain, ride through the pain, ride through the pain. I think I was so changing the way that I was riding and just being that way to where it caused the crash, caused the crash a little bit to where I then did my ACL. So it's just it, that whole year tumbleweeded for me. And then I sent them a letter saying I wanted to get off the bike just because it was, I didn't want to be there. It was a weird, weird ordeal. And... It was it was wrong of me to do, but I, like I wanted to go somewhere else, and it just we well, didn't race the whole year anyway. Didn't race right? the whole so year. Like, I wanted well, I wanted did you to have go two year deal. No, that was it. Okay. I, but I had an offer to stay there for two more, and it's looking back, yeah, I should have stayed. Instead really? Of, instead of going to Cali, I should have stayed. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's instead of right. going to Cali, I should have stayed. Wow. Okay, so <laughs> how you know the foot now is good though? Yep. All right. My knees aren't good, but my foot's good. So you got an offer to go to Cali. Let's yep. talk about that. Yeah. Um, because that didn't go well. No. Nope. Well, it seemed like it was started out good. You won the monster. monster yeah. And then I got Epstein Bar. Oh. Yeah. Then I got Epstein Bar. How and did it, you get that? Did they ever, you know, like, if you if you overtrain, you work yourself into a hole, you can get it. But like, did they ever? How did you get it? <sighs> I started training decent with with Fed. Um, I was training with Ryan. Ryan was one of my best friends for 17 years. So like, when I when I was done with trainers, I'm like Ryan, like I know you're into it. Like you're my boy. Like let's go. You know I know you can push me. And I'm not gonna say it was his fault that I got it. Um, you guys pushed real hard. For but a while we we pushed hard, and then when I won the Monster Cup. We kept pushing, kept pushing, kept pushing, and I felt I was actually feeling really good. And then I went to Martine's wedding, and I had a couple of drinks there. Obviously, being the best man, had a couple of drinks, and from that point on, I never got, never was okay. And from everything that I can, I'm not blaming obviously him either, but it's one of those things where thanks a lot, Martine. Everything, everything that I read about or hear about is, is you know, if you are in a hole and you add the alcohol to it, it creates you know, a recipe for disaster. Mm. And I didn't know that. I didn't feel like I was in a hole, but I guess I wasn't really taking a lot of supplements to help keep my body up. Mm. Right. When, yeah. when we were training so hard, um, cause I couldn't really complain all that much. I about wonder him. if too, if it had anything to do with all the surgeries the year before. Yeah, probably. I mean, I had, yeah. a, I had nine of them that year. It's hard for your body to, you know, so it's just, like I said, there were so many things that mm. played into the, you know, played into it. But, had Epstein Bar, got tested for it, and I called Cowie instantly and I said, Hey, look, I said, I told you guys I haven't been feeling right. Like, this is my deal. Let me start late. Let me get this fixed. Let me come in halfway through the season, please. Like, let me get my body right. I, I don't, I'm, I'm not capable of, of racing. I really not. You know, I can even come back for outdoors. I'll come back as soon as I can. Like, just, let me focus right now on getting my body healthy so I can I can come back. And I'm like, no, you gotta race. I'm like, okay. I'm like, I don't want to. Like I literally I, I my my yeah. motors my motor skills and, and everything around me is not working. Mm -hmm. Jumps were coming at me way too fast. <laughs> Sometimes they'd be really far away, but yet they were actually really close or vice versa. And my timing was off. I didn't know what to do. I, I was getting tired after two laps. I couldn't go anywhere. And they got to the point where they just thought I was lying. Because I know Alden doesn't believe in Epstein Bar. And that's obviously who they would go to for everything right. because of RV. Because of RV. So I was even talking to Alden too. And I said, because I was. How does he not believe in it? Uh, I even told him, I said, dude, like, let, me, like, let me come there. Like, I'll pay, let, let me come. 
And I was talking about the Epstein bar. And after I said, mentioned that and stuff like that, it's like, I, I never heard back. And, um, and then like two weekends later is when they figured out how they were going to get rid of me. So that's, which, that's how that went down. Which I mean, and you're in a tough position. Cause if you, it's like, you don't want to, they need somebody to race. Yeah. You don't want to not race for too long. You've already been off a whole year. Yeah. But if you come back and you suck, yeah. then people go, oh, he's done. Yeah. You know, he, he doesn't have it anymore. Yeah. So it puts you in a really bad place. I didn't want, trust me, I wish I was. I came back and won, you know, Monster Cup. And then it just happened to be where I get Epstein Bar just maybe a month later. Yeah. And I was struggle bus. Struggle bus. Was it, were you gelling with the bike? Didn't seem like you were really happy there at all. Oh, that too. But yeah. I could, I, that wasn't even a, a factor at the time. No. And, and you know, when we talk about factories being very rigid, I feel like Cowie's was that way. I don't know if they still are, but boy, I've heard from at least three, four guys that have been there. Yeah, I, I wasn't comfortable. I wanted to try stuff, and they're like, nope, this bike wins. It's won before. Yep. That's how it is. Uh huh. It's crazy to me. It's and like, dude, wouldn't you just want to do. Even if the guy's going down a wrong road, like let him go if he's going to get, you know, <laughs> yeah. if it gets him to a place where he goes, all right, this is the best setup. But RV won so much on it and he's such a rear end rider. Yeah. And no one rides like him. No one. It, only one that was close was Ricky as far as being a rear end yeah. rider and wide open and, and just on the gas yeah. where everyone else is more, you know, meticulous and, and front end rider or, or neutral where I was very front. So me being on a rear end bike, Oh man, it was it was miserable, but I was doing what I could to make it work. Just the Epstein bar, honestly. Like if I didn't have Epstein, I mean, I was probably you know top five pace on that bike. Um, but maybe it could have gotten better because they would have cared, hmm. you know. But since I was eighth, ninth, tenth, twelfth, fifteenth, yeah. they didn't care. They wanted me gone. Well. Um the next question, this yep. is our seat concepts hot seat question here. We got to ask about the locker <laughs> incident. Everyone wants to of know. Of course. I know you've answered it. A billion times. And it's not what people think. Like for those who have not heard Davey answer this, <laughs> uh, everyone thinks, oh, it was, it was some kind of drugs. Like it was just an anti-inflammatory. It was an anti-inflammatory. Like, thing, right? So it was, it, it was a patch that you put on. It's an iontophoresis patch. And you take the stuff out of the vial and you put it on the pad so you can put the pad on and there's a negative and positive on the pad and it just puts it through to your muscle. But for me, I had intersection syndrome in my wrist that my, something was collapsed and it was, it was, it was so painful. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what was going on. It literally felt like if you did, if I did this and you put your hand here, it was just like, it was gnarly. So had, yes, I had a prescription for it. It was in my locker at Phoenix, which was the second round, but they fired me with three rounds to go. So, yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't make sense? Was no. there, and there was some legal stuff, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't want to, you know. No, I mean, it, we, we obviously ended up settling and, and going about it. That's why I can't really say yeah. exactly yeah. what was in my locker. Yeah. But was it legal? 100%. 100% it was 100% legal. Mm -hmm. And yes, I had a prescription. Yeah. And no, I never even used it. It wasn't even open. Really? No. Yeah. That's crazy. Because I didn't need it because I had previously gotten it from the doctor and he just gave it to me for extra. So they gave it to me in my, on my wrist before Phoenix and I never needed it again. That's why I forgot about it or yeah. I would never have been there. We talked earlier about kind of having a 10-year window. You're, you're already past that in your career. Were you feeling like you were kind of late in your career, like you were almost done, or do you still feel like you had some gas in the tank? Because you were, I mean, you know, 13 was a great year. Then it yeah. was a couple rough ones. But like you said, <laughs> you were feeling in 17, like mm -hmm. better than ever, maybe. Yeah. I, it, 16, I felt so decent. talk about 16. You went back to BTO, right? Yeah, I went to BTO. Or and, sorry, yeah. Yeah, and I felt good. Um, not the greatest, but I, I felt good. Um, I was still dealing with just stupid little injuries. Got hurt at Daytona. Classed my lung, or partially classed my lung and broke six ribs at Daytona. Mm -hmm. um, and was off until Vegas that year. 
but then went and raced Canada. So 16 was 16 was a good year. I felt strong in the summertime in Canada, which okay. is probably one of the most fun times I've ever had on a dirt bike. And you won the title, yeah. There, right? Yeah. Okay. And Honestly, one of the probably the most fun times I've ever had on a dirt bike. Yeah. Just the tracks were miserable, but they were so miserable like they were fun. You know, it was well, just it was even weird. Like uh, I raced at Wild Rose up in Calgary. That was a fun track, I thought. I don't know if I don't know what Wild Rose was. Uh, it, it was, was the one that overlooked the, the city. city. Yeah. yeah so like it was. That one wasn't, it was just so dry. Oh, like, that was oh. so dry. Mm. But I mean, I won that one. I went one, one there. Um, but it was just like the tracks were amateur tracks, yeah. but the whole racing, like racing everyone was amateur style. Should I say? Cause everyone talked, everyone hung out except for Alessi, obviously everyone just talked and hung out and laughed. Yeah. And, and I still got protested by Alessi the second race. Um, of course. <laughs> but, but, um, that one never changed. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Mike, Mike and I, we talk nowadays, like it is what it is. Um, but that whole, that whole series was just one of those ones where KTM never had a championship there for 450. So they sent me. Okay. And I mean, I, I didn't want to go, but I'm like, whatever, it'd be fun. Yeah. It honestly brought the fun back to the dirt bikes for me yeah. so much. It, I mean, well, and going to a smaller type of series or racing, like when I went and did Supermoto, it was that way. Yeah. There's less money. And so the, the, the tension and all the yeah. BS kind of goes away and it's just down to yeah. sort of that purity of it. Right. Yeah. And Canadians are just pretty friendly people. Anyway. Yes. I don't know if you found that, but like, yeah. Just easy going. Yeah. You know, no, every, everything Probably was so much fun. Have a beer with you. you know. I didn't drink then. Oh, really? Well, no, I didn't. If I don't, you I did, don't, I don't like beer. Oh, okay. Um, so, but no, dude, it was, it was so much fun. I had such a good time. Um, and I was planning on doing it again when I retired, but obviously that didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, end of that season, tell me about the Yamaha thing. Well, that was 16. So, going to 17 yeah. is KTM. And then, um, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then I signed with Yamaha at the end of 17 and 17. How did it go? Just okay. Uh, I broke my wrist the last round in Canada Oh. and had it fixed and that, that went bad. Like the doctor really messed it up to where he messed my thumb up at the same time he went and did my thumb too Great. and messed my wrist up to where when I went back and had the another x-ray and MRI done, um, it, he didn't change it. He literally put a bunch of rope inside of my wrist, like to tie stuff up and the rope fell off and it was lodged in my wrist too, as well with the, with the broken scaphoid and the torn ligament that was in there. Oh my God. Um, who was this doctor? <laughs> no one. Um, I'm not, I'm not saying doctor names. Um, was it a guy you'd used before? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, you didn't use it again, I assume. <laughs> no, no. But then I, when I was racing all year, like, Halfway through, at, when I went to Atlanta, I don't even think I was halfway yet. Um, I don't know what I was doing, but we rolled one lap, came around, and the second lap, you usually skim the whoops. It's just normal, but yeah. I guess they were so big that no one wanted to skim them, but Dungy and I skimmed them side by side, and someone in the front went over to the right as I came up on them. Uh -huh. When they went to the right, Schmidt was rolling, or basically stopped. And the whoops. And I had nowhere to go. Uh, you can't let off or turn. So I, I tried to let off, but I was going way too fast and trying to come to like a complete stop. And they were so sticky and went over the bars and did the same thing to my right wrist. So that now you had just done to your left? That I had oh, done to my yeah. left. So now I have both wrists. I didn't race that night because of it. And I'm fifth in points. So I'm like, I have far enough gap from six that, you know, I can, I can deal with it. Let me get my wrist anyway. The rest of the season, I, I raced with two bad wrists, um, and ended up fifth in points. Not not bad, but you know, not great. Yeah. Went, had both my wrists fixed right after uh, Vegas. They were both done same time, um, and still about a month later, I was in so much pain still, and they shouldn't have been. So then, at two months, I went back and they injected my wrist. Um, to help with, with, you know, with cortisone. Okay. And at that point I'm like, I'm like, I'm good. Like I'm done. Like leave them. They don't hurt me. Um, so let's go. And then, but I was already still cycling. I was in shape. I was using, you know, going to the gym a lot. And that's when I started riding, especially riding the Yamaha and rode outdoors for a, a day. 
Okay. And went straight to Supercross. And I mean, doing my first day back in Supercross, I did 60 laps. And what was this team? Um, I, I Did they ever even finish? What was the team you were riding for? The Yamaha? Yeah. It was, it was factory. Oh, it was factory? Yeah, it oh, was okay. factory. It was just the sponsor went away. Okay. Yeah, yeah I saw it. It was like a Extreme or what was the... A uh, niche. Okay. Yeah, it went away. Yeah, I was like, what the hell so is that? So okay. they didn't leave for any other reason. I don't know why. Um, mm-hmm. I brought them on and it just went south. Okay. You know, like nothing to do with me. They're the ones that signed the contract. I just brought the, you know, the deal and they vetted them and the okay. rest is on them. But you were liking the bike right away? I love the bike. In a way, night and day from the bike you rode at JJ. Oh, I mean, I was pumped. Mm-hmm. I was so pumped. And, you know, having Drewski there, he was at Honda. So for, you know, me, he had that mentality back then of, you know, our way is better. So when I started working with him at Yamaha, he was way open-minded. And I'm like, dude, who are you? Like, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. And the day that I crashed, I've been asking for my forks to be plush up top and then just ramp up. Just find me something plush and still hold up for how big I am, you know? And, and my shock <clears throat> to be the same way, a little bit plush up top, but then I do, I need it. I need it stiff. I need it fast. And as far as, you know, open rebound, um, you know, take the rebound out. I don't care. The day I crashed, they got it. Both the force and the shock were probably the most badass set of suspension I've, I've ever ridden. Mm. And I had three laps left for the day. I was in my 20, had three laps. I remember getting the three laps on the board, three laps left. And that's all I remember for about two and a half months of my life past that. Really? So yeah. what, what did they say happened? Oh, you what know, they, they, they put a whole spiel about what happened just to try to throw me off. Why? I don't know. Like they thought I was going to come after them or something, but I'm like, dude, I signed up to ride dirt bikes. Like I, I understand things go bad, yeah. but I went on, you know, when you have a jump on, jump across, jump off table over single. I, and it had little lips on it, but not ones that you can go on over the next table. Like there was not enough flip for that, but you know, on a 450 when you come out of corner and you get on to the first one and there's a lip, like you're moving, yeah. like you're not going slow. I went on off and my bike shut off as I was going off the next one. And the tabletop was right there. And from what I've gathered, obviously there wasn't enough time for me to jump like off the bike. But I know when I went back and looked um, at the face, I went back and looked in like February at the face of what I landed. My mark was still there. Um, and my helmet is only scraped on one side. So I know I tucked. I had to have tucked. And I completely disintegrated my elbow. Um, oh, look at the <laughs> lump on that thing. It's just, it's just, what is that? It's all metal. Oh, it is? I don't have an elbow. No one would touch me in California for surgery. I had to fly some. I had to fly to uh, Randy, uh, Viola, and Sedman. He was the only one that would touch my elbow to really? fix it. So, shut off, knocked myself out, and that's pretty much that's Who, it. Outside of your, you know, Drew, whoever else was there, yeah. did you? There's only one person there when I crashed. Who? Uh, Hutch. Okay. He was the only person. Everyone had already left. I literally had three laps left for the day, so everyone was gone. And did he freak? I mean, I'm sure he's like. From what I was told, like, yeah, I scared the shit out of him. I mean, he thought I was dead. Yeah. Um, and talking to the neurologist and the doctors, I know, like, they all said that I should have been dead. Like, the impact of my helmet was one of the hardest ones Bell had seen in, in that side of the, their helmet, which is not a good thing to have. Um, and the amount of brain, like, trauma. But it was weird, though, because there was blood around my entire brain, just not all my brain. And there was blood in the center of my brain. It's the only spot that had blood on it, which is uh, motor scales, supposedly, from what I remember. But with the brain swelling and brain bleeding, they wouldn't let you back racing. Hmm. So did they? Did they have to put a hole in you? Nope. They didn't have to really pressure. Why? No, because okay. I, I don't know. Like, whenever I talked to the neurologist, I talked to two. I talked to one from Michigan, who's like one of the top three best in, in the country. Mm-hmm. Um, he looked at all my, uh, my CAT scans and MRIs and stuff and straight up said that he doesn't know how I'm alive. Really? So, yeah. Whatever, whatever happened, someone was looking out for me. Yeah. Yeah. So. And so from that, obviously, pretty straightforward decision. You're, you're not going to race anymore. Yeah. But you had some, have and still have some effects. Yes. Like you said, vision. Yeah. Um, road signs at night um, <laughs> i can't see that 
Yeah. yeah. What, what was the other stuff you were telling me? Oh, letters, like some letters. I can't, the, the, the M and the W's for me, like if I'm writing on, on a piece of paper, I have, to, I have to pause in order to write them because for some reason my brain knows what to do, but my hand has to stop and then like rethink how to write you know, it. So if you have a Davy Wilsap's signature <laughs> on something, that's worth a lot no. of money. Hang on to that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, there was obviously more than that, that, you know, that came along with it for a short period of time. Um, but did you have like headaches, dizziness, blurred vision, that kind of blurred stuff? vision's still there. Oh, is it? Yeah. I mean, it's it, in regular conditions. Yeah. So? Yeah. yeah. So all the time or all the time I can't see far away or, or sometimes I can't see up close. Like I have no idea what any of these, you know, letters are on your papers right in front of me. I have no idea what they oh, are. Really? Um, even with like readers, if you doesn't put, help, it doesn't help. Nope. So yeah, I can see, you know, arena cross championship, you know, behind you. Yeah, I can see that. But Road signs, I can't see. Um, I, I had 20 20 vision before I hit my head. Do you have like, um, did it change? You know, I know some people with brain injuries, it changes their personality or their like I was demeanor. Bad. It, yeah, I was real bad. Yeah. I heard you say you even kind of had like suicidal thoughts uh -huh. and stuff. Yeah, I was very depressed. Um, I was happy. I guess I was super happy. Well, uh, for, in the hospital and then home, you know, I was you know, talking to people that weren't there. I was out there having a conversation with people. Oh, really? um, I was looking for things in my house to, to you know, cause I had stuff that could kill everyone in the world. I don't do trust me. I was watching crazy TV shows before I hit my head. And I guess I was trying to, I was living in the TV show according to what the neurologist was telling me. Cause oh, really? it was trippy. Brittany ended up calling, you know, Ryan and having Fedora come and check the entire house and put me to bed and make sure that she was safe. Um, that, cause that's how bad it was. Um, Ryan had to come multiple times from when I guess I don't remember any of this. Were you living out in Southern California? Yeah, I was in Marietta. Yeah. I don't remember any of this. People that came to my house, I'm sorry, I, I don't remember you ever coming um, to my I house. I was there, dude. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, that the, is gnarly. the depression, the suicidal thoughts, those came a little bit after. Um, it got to the point to where it was, I was so miserable dealing with it. That's where the suicide stuff came in. It was like it would be easier if it was just over. Yeah. Um, but then like, you know, you see my kids and, and then my wife and stuff. And I'm like, I, no, like I can't. Yeah. And that's what's, that's what brought me back. Yeah. So do you still have any of that? Is there any of those emotional or like, um, personality issues that kind of come and go? The personality issues I would say are very far and few between like if they are, okay. um, sometimes it's more things that I, I have a hard time. I know I'm doing them, but I, I have a hard time controlling them, but it's only, like stupid little things, nothing, something, you know, little, little yeah. petty things, nothing, nothing like it was before yeah. by no means. I'm, I'm not depressed. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Um, and I don't really have, you know, suicidal thoughts anymore. So that's a, that's a positive. Yeah. Um, I get very irritated probably quicker than I ever have in my entire life. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to really get rid of that one. I've tried. It's not, it's not bad, bad, but it, it, I do notice it, but I can't stop it. Mm. Um, that's yeah. crazy, man. Um, there's been a couple guys, I don't want to yeah. mention any names, but like they, they are totally different people. Yeah. Like their personality completely changed. Yeah. And I mean, you know, obviously I think that depends on where you hit your head and all yeah. that kind of stuff, but the frontal lobe is the gateway lucky, to your brain. You know? Yeah. I feel like I did. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm still here talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Well, geez. So. That's gnarly. Yeah. Um, so was it hard to, was it hard to retire? I mean, I, I feel like that prognosis and sort of what you went through will probably make it easier, but you still are like, okay, well I'm done racing. It, it was, was tough, tough transition. I think in the state that I was in, I don't remember ever retiring. You know, I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> you just kind of come to and you're like, Oh, I'm retired. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, I knew, you know, after a while it started to, you know, come back to me. Um, but, getting, getting, you know, the info from the doctor saying, no, you're not racing anymore. And I, and there's no way around that because the person that works for the medical unit at the Supercross was in the room with me when I was there at the hospital. Oh. So there's no way around me fibbing anything. Um, and you know, I, when I look back, I remember calling Fedoro to, you know, cause he was the first person I called when I, when I retired. Um, I know I remember calling him, but literally like, that's the only person I remember calling. I remember calling a lot of people, but he's the only one I remember calling. Um, then we ended up, we were selling the house in Marietta and moving to, moving to Havasu anyway. So with 
hitting my head, going through all my emotional roller coasters and moving and retiring and, and all to a new place. Like that was, a, that was a, a lot for me to take in, you know, with, with what I was going through. Yeah. So yeah, I think it was just bad timing for everything, mm. but I don't think anything would have made it right. So I knew I was emotional for retiring because I, I knew how in shape and how strong and how fit I was and how fast I was going. That probably made it the hardest for me to know that I'm not ever going to get the show that. Yeah, if it had happened maybe the year before, you'd been like, it'd have been easier. Yes. Maybe, huh? Yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit because um, I really wasn't in that right mindset. But as soon as 17 was getting to the end and I sat down and I talked with the, you know, I was working with, with, uh, with sellers and at the end of 17 going into 18 and I was back working with Pablo. Um, I'm everything I had into it. So like that point, that mindset changed. So yeah, if it happened earlier, it probably wouldn't have mattered yeah. too much. You still talk to Brock? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just yeah. called him the other day. He didn't pick up. Yep. I miss that guy. You gotta call his house at a certain time of night. Yeah, I just know. Because he gets out of service when he gets home. So oh. you gotta call him. It's, yeah. And he's, and he's a baseball coach and he's explaining all this stuff to me that he does with like how he, I'm like, dude, I have, you're speaking gibberish. I've never watched a single baseball game in my entire no, life. No, I don't know anything about it. Um, so what about Bo Mayer? Is this something, the work you've been doing with Juju, is that something you want to keep doing? You liking that? Or is yeah. it just because he's a Havasu kid? <laughs> I mean, I was working, you know, with kids before Julian. Um, as as you were that involved? Yeah, I was working with Derek and Carson. Oh yeah, I guess that's true. And All then right. and then I had Benny, and then he got hurt a couple years ago. Um, uh, but then I had Dean last year as well. But that was a whole off season nightmare. Um, Dean Wilson? Yeah. Oh, why? What was the nightmare? Just he was having bike issues all year round. Not not actual from the you know. The team, just the mechanics and stuff like that did, that he was hiring and that he was around and um, just wasn't maybe the best mm. choice. So he was always breaking something, always breaking something. Literally hardly ever finished a day. Um, it's good for the confidence. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I literally watched him bail off in front of me and don't know how he didn't snap both his legs. But somehow he got up. Um, and then when I was working with him, I saw Julian at the dairy track in Nuevo yeah. and they were talking about doing the quad. Um, I don't know if you guys watched the show that, you know, came on where aired him and stuff like that on TV. He, uh, no. So he was t him and him and this kid were talking about doing this quad that chase was doing and they were just like, Oh my God, Oh my God, Oh my God. And, and I, you know, I talked up, told him, you know, like y'all are sitting over here wanting to go pro, but then you're going to be freaking scared of doing a quad. I'm like you guys want to pack up and go the fuck home because you ain't going to become pro if you don't want to hit that. And it was tiny. Really? And he looked at me like, I mean, I said more than that, but it was just the gist of it. He looked at me like, what? And he went out, literally rode around, did the rhythm section before it. First time, hit it. No issues. Came over to me and he said, wow, I'm a bitch. I'm like, I told you you were going to tell me that. Mm -hmm. And I got a phone call two days later from him. Okay. So well, that's how that came That's about. how that came about. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I, I love working with him. It, it's, he makes it fun because he's so coachable mm -hmm. and he puts so much effort in. Mm -hmm. If he didn't give me effort, no, it wouldn't be fun. And then, you know, so that's great for me. And then you have Benny um, who has been struggling obviously all off season. Um, just new team, new bike, everything else. And started to get, you know, starting to get on the roll again. So he's coming back into shape. Um, <clears throat> but as far as, as far as, you know, those two go, it's, uh, they're, I mean, they're a handful. I mean, it's every day, <laughs> all day, you know, and then you add Cameron and you add Ryder McNabb and, and, you know, I write David, I give David Pulley a program just every week. I write him a program and he, t and he calls me like, what do you think? What do you think? Some videos. I try to help him. I mean, the kid puts so much effort in, like I would like to see him make a main, you yeah. know, it'd be, it'd be cool. Um, I don't, I don't do it. I don't have to train the best guys. I, I can train whoever yeah. and get satisfied, you know, satisfaction out of literally just seeing someone elevate a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Um, but Julian, Benny, I mean, obviously Ryder me now is fast outdoors. Yeah, I'm anxious to watch yeah. this kid. I, yeah. We did a little interview with him earlier in the year, and I think 
he's going to catch people off guard. Yeah. yeah, I think so too. I only, I'm only his riding coach, so I only do on the bike stuff, but hands down, um, I know Julian's pumped that he's on board with me, so he has someone to moto with mm-hmm. because Ryder. They're gonna push each other. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, Ryder's fast. But again, I think I think what you guys are seeing at Julian his rookie year, as well as he's 17 and was a B rider last year. He wasn't a Deegan who was in yeah. the spotlight. He wasn't a Dax who was in the spotlight. He wasn't anyone. No one really knew who he was before. Yeah. Glendale last year, if you think about it. No one knew, who, or even before Anaheim too, when he came out with the fastest time. Not many people had him on the radar, should I say. Yeah. To where now he's one of those guys that, is he gonna show up tonight? Yeah, and I mean, A1, I was like, all right, kid is legit, yeah. you know? And I mean, it's yeah. he, he doesn't have the consistency yet, and muddy supercrosses are a whole different animal, right? And like, especially those ones. Those were dirty. <laughs> those were not good. <laughs> Good Those experience. Were, yeah. Them, right? Nothing's <laughs> going to catch another one. Them. Another one coming up. You know what oh, I mean? Well, anyway, it'd be fun to watch him. Yeah. Is there, is there anything else in the sport or outside the sport you want to do? Like, where do you see yourself in the next five, six, 10 years? Is this track facility something you want to go spend time at or just, yeah. Sort of- you know, I was talking to, to Ryan who is the owner of like the development and yeah. stuff like that. Um, and, we were talking about it last week <clears throat> when I had the meeting with him. I'm, I'm like, if this can, you know, be self-sufficient and be running and I can bring races there and I can do cool stuff there, like let's bounce around with it. I mean, I think that'd be a badass opportunity to do something like that for this industry, mm-hmm. um, to bring man caves where obviously us as men love. Yeah. And if we ever had a man cave growing up, you can have, you know, your whole dirt bike shop in there, but you can have a full setup, a getaway from home to where you know if your kid's there, you know he has everything set up, you don't have to worry, you can be gone for a weekend and be okay. Yeah. Um, if we can bounce around with that stuff, I think it'd be just something fun for me to get into and something to do to bring back to the, to the community, to the industry. Um, I enjoy training, I do. Um, I'll do it as long as you know Julian and Benny and, and Cameron and, and Ryder and whoever else you know wanna keep me. Um, it is getting rough with the commute, though. Um, that's getting rough, yeah. especially having a, my daughter getting older. Mm. Um, my son, he's okay being away from me. Obviously, it's more of a more of a girl thing, mm. but it, it is getting tough. It's getting tough. But again, it's it's what we have to do. You know, we sold the house to move. And my wife gets her job, so we stay, and I'm back to commuting. <laughs> so yeah, well, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, so you think that's probably something um, you can maybe look into is more of the on that moto the track side yeah. maybe bring that around, but maybe still some coaching. I yeah I, I enjoy it I do I my my goal is to as I mean I want to get back and shape myself <clears throat> enough to where I can do a full Ironman like, that's my that's my main goal. Oh really? Um, I was training for a half Ironman not too long ago and I messed my back up so I haven't been able to train right for almost five months now. Um, yes, with all my well, hold on, so you're. All the knee and ankle. Foot I deal with. I deal with that. I just deal with it. But I. But I want that half Ironman, and I want the Ironman. I don't know. I only want one, but I want it. And, but my back, my back <sighs> ruined me. So, yeah, it was it was a good one. You really did embrace the suffering. I did until <laughs> until <laughs> I couldn't anyway. because at that point I I literally couldn't you know and it's now it's getting to the point to where I have to get back into it. I have to push through it a little bit more. Even though it hurts so it's bad, it's hard to start, huh? Well, it, when you've been running a little bit, it kind of you almost and, and I up to hate it. it. Yeah, and I mean, with a passion, I hate running, and I started to actually be okay with it, yeah. and now I got to go through that again. So yeah. it's like, I I need to tell myself, most that's mindset, right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right. Well, last question yeah. we ask everybody um, is, how do you want to be remembered in this sport? What's the legacy you want to leave? Man. I feel like for me, honestly, I feel like I left an amateur legacy more than a pro, which I feel like is is okay. Um, and hopefully I can leave a legacy of showing people that <laughs> you can make mistakes, but learn from them. You know, just don't wait too long. I wanna have the legacy of, of 
what not to do, mm-hmm. you know, and that's okay. I can be the one that's what not to do. I can be one of the ones that's what not to do, but probably one of the biggest ones of what not to do. And I'm okay with that because it hopefully it shows younger kids in the generation to keep the sport going of what to change and how it to get better. So they can have a better path than what I did. Yeah. Um, if, if I can help one guy that was worth me making all the mistakes and that's what I'm trying to do right now with Julian. And if it can help anyone in the future and if they hear this, and know it if they want to talk to me and understand what not to do and watch out for yes men and watch out for those guys. That to me, honestly, the legacy of, of people learning from my mistakes mm-hmm. would probably be the biggest impact I could have on the sport. Mm-hmm. If you want the truth. That's awesome, man. I mean, yeah. I think sometimes those guys like um, the dogger. I mean, he's a legend. Right? Yeah. Like, um, could have won way more championships if, yeah. if he was a little more straight edge, but <laughs> he'll live in, he's in, you know, like that guy's infamous. You yeah. Know, we'll, people will be talking about the dogger forever. And I mean, I feel like you're kind of in that boat. Probably didn't party quite as hard as him. I no, think, but no, 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 no. I, but you were crazy, crazy good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm like I said, watching your days when you were on like a one and 13 yeah. or just wherever the races yeah. were, dude, you're incredible to watch. Thank you. And Thank just, you just like a big powerful rider it was fun yeah. to watch you yeah um so anyway hell of a career well, thank man. you i love your story yeah. i appreciate you taking the time to of share course. with us man. thank you stick around that was davy Millsaps. hope you guys enjoyed it i'm gonna be back to wrap up the show stay tuned All right, welcome back. Hey, I want to thank Davey Millsaps for taking the time to come in today. Really appreciated him uh, giving us that time today. And I hope you guys like the story. Hell of a career. A little bit of cautionary tale in there. But I love that he's so open about it and and willing to kind of share what he did did right and what he didn't do right. Uh, And I hope people can learn from that. And uh, this guy was incredible. A lot of race wins. Unbelievably talented. And um, just really fun to go through his story and get to know him a little bit better. So... A big thank you to Davey. Big thank you to our sponsors. If you folks are looking for any of these uh, parts, products, brands that we have supporting this show, please support them. Uh, They keep this show coming to you. We've got a lot of great shows coming up. So uh, stick around. Hope you guys enjoy them. Thanks for watching. As always, we'll see you next time. Yamaha is the industry leader in two-wheeled fun and performance. Celebrating 50 years of YZ in 2024, the Blue Crew is still dominating shootouts and competitions. Yamaha revs your heart. Troy Lee Designs is the leader in off-road motocross apparel and style. So whether you're looking for a cool new paint job for your helmet, maybe your name and number on your helmet lettered on, you're looking for new gear, you're looking for mountain bike gear, off-road gear, they've got the brand new Scout line in GP and SE models. Troy Lee Designs has it all. They've been leading this industry for decades and they're going to continue to do it. Check out TroyLeeDesigns.com. SKDA is a moto graphics and seat covers company with several offices based around the globe. For too long, bikes and graphics have all looked the same. They just start to blend together. SKDA is working to change that. With super clean and unique design work, a bike with SKDA graphics stands out in a crowd and adds a touch of art to the world of moto. Hey, we need that. SKDA prides itself on providing premium customer service both before and after the sale is made. Visit SKDA online to view the current product range and get in touch with their team to get your bike refreshed. I want to just make a a mention here that these guys, not only is their design way outside the box, very, very cool. They'll work with you on custom things. The the products are incredible. Okay, they'll speak for themselves. But what's really awesome, and you'll notice this the minute you order one of these, man, they give you an email saying, hey, the product's been shipped. Uh, Hey, the product is here. It landed in this spot. Hey, it's coming today. Hey, your product's been delivered. They're just so good about staying in touch with you and letting you know where it's at. Customer service is 100%, and uh, that's just something that's rare these days. Check out SKDA. Here at the Whiskey Throttle Show, we're all about supporting brands that support our sport. And there's one tire company that has never walked away from the sport of motocross and supercross, and it's Dunlop. When times got tough and the economy took a crash, Dunlop stepped up and stayed with our sport to support it and the athletes and individuals that love it. Their MX-53 line and MX-33 lines absolutely dominate this sport. Every national championship at the pro level has been won in the last decade, and nearly every single amateur national championship at Loretta Lynn's has been won on a Dunlop. 
So if you're looking for high performance, you're looking for amazing quality, and you're looking to support a brand that never turns its back on our sport, there's only one choice for you, and it's Dunlop. Pro Circuit is the leader in aftermarket performance and quality. Whether you're looking for a little more horsepower out of your engine, some quality hard parts to improve the way your bike feels and looks, better handling through suspension or linkage or linkage arms, Pro Circuit is where you need to stop. It's your one-stop shop. You can go in there and get everything you need to make your motorcycle go from average to exceptional. Pro Circuit's got enough number one plates on their wall to side an entire home, and there's a reason for that. They're very, very good at what they do. Uh, the highest quality products with one goal in mind, and that's winning. Check out ProCircuit.com. Nihilo Concepts is leading the way in aftermarket hard parts. With their secondary on-switch device, something that was much needed in this sport, they've been innovating and bringing new products to market. Their latest is the new Nihilo Run-Cool Brake Pistons. They're designed to be stronger than stock and provide exceptional cooling performance with less brake drag. Most OEM calipers pistons are made from aluminum that just can't hold it to the heat and extreme demands of serious racing. When they get hot, the aluminum will distort, causing loss of hydraulic pressure and brake failure. Nihilo's run-cool pistons limit the area that boiling hot hydraulic fluid is able to come in contact with the piston, leaving two-thirds of the piston volume in open air with breather holes to enhance the cooling ability. It's made of a proprietary stainless blend, which is better at dissipating heat. You have issues with brake fade or brake failure, check out Nihilo Concepts among their many amazing hard parts and carbon fiber parts and titanium. NihiloConcepts.com. Seat Concepts is the leader in motorcycle saddles. If you're looking for a new cover or a new seat entirely, Seat Concepts is the place to go. They make custom seat foams catered to your height, weight, riding ability, riding type. They also have waterproof covers and, and foams that will not break down if you ride in a lot of inclement weather. And they pride themselves on being much more comfortable than OEM or any other aftermarket company. If you're looking for a new seat or a new cover, Seat Concepts, there's nothing better. Need to replace something on your bike that's worn out? Look no further than Pro-X. These guys aim to make everything OEM quality or better at an affordable price. And they've also got some new products coming. So right now, chains, sprockets, anything inside the, in the engine internally, air filters. If it wears out, Pro-X makes it, and they make it at a quality level that's OEM or better. And they've got some new things coming that are awesome. A complete engine rebuild kits for the Polaris RZR 800s. Need to replace something on your bike that's worn out? Look no further than Pro-X. These guys aim to make everything OEM quality or better at an affordable price. And they've also got some new products coming. So right now, chains, sprockets, anything inside the, in the engine internally, air filters. If it wears out, Pro-X makes it, and they make it at a quality level that's OEM or better. And they've got some new things coming that are awesome. A complete engine rebuild kits for the... If you've got a little Grom that's looking to get started in the motorcycle world, the best way to get them going is on a Stasic bike. They've got multiple sizes, so from your very young Groms to those who are a little more grown up, you can start them safely. They've got controls that allow you to control the speed so he can't get going too quick. They can touch the ground. There's not a lot of noise to distract them. It's the perfect way to get your child involved in motorcycling at a very young age. And if you've got a kid who's already out ripping... There's series popping up all over. For those of you in Southern California, go to www.ameminicross.com and join their local series. If you're outside of this state, contact your local track and ask them about starting a Stasic class at your local track. Get over to stasic.com and check out all they've got going on. Motu and finally, last but not least, specialized bicycles. If you are in the market to start pedaling, this is where you want to start. Uh, they've got great entry-level bikes all the way up to the Cadillac, the new Levo um, e-bike, uh, any, anything in between, man. It doesn't matter what kind of riding you're doing. Go check out and start with Specialized. Don't waste your time on something that's going to break. The derailleur's not going to shift after a couple months. Get something quality. Uh, these guys make it. Specialized leads that industry. Thanks for watching and listening to the Whiskey Throttle Show. Be sure to like and subscribe to get notified when new shows go up. And be sure to follow us on Instagram and TikTok and visit whiskeythrottlemedia.com for additional content.